Okay, good evening. This is a regular meeting of the Jersey City Municipal Council. It is 6.23 p.m. I just silenced my phone. I hope you'll all take that cue and do the same. At 6.23 p.m., we have all nine members of the City Council in attendance. Can we rise and observe a moment of silence, please? Chief Rivers' grandson. Kelly Fowler's father. The New Jersey Public Laws of 1975, Chapter 231, the Open Public Meetings Act, better known as the Sunshine Law. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided by notifying the local newspapers and posting the annual notice on the bulletin board of the first floor of City Hall on December 20th, 2012, which indicated the schedule of meetings and caucuses of the Municipal Council for the calendar year 2013. In addition, at the time of its preparation, the agenda of this meeting was similarly disseminated on Friday, December 13th, 2013, at 4 p.m. to the Mayor, Council, Business Administrator, and the Jersey City Reporter and Journal, Jersey Journal. So we're in full compliance with the Sunshine Law, Council Members. Uh, the first motion I'd like, Council Members, is to ask for a motion to add resolutions 10Z36 through 10Z41. Motion. Second. Who made the motion? Council President. Sorry? Council President. Council President Lavaro. Seconded by? Kiko. Councilman Ramcho. Cal Council Person Ramcho. Okay, but Z41 is not on the printed agenda, and maybe a statement will go along with this. Uh, Z41 is a resolution authorizing the extension of a contract with the Jersey City Medical Center to provide basic life support services in the city of Jersey City. A uh, great many of you are here concerned about the ambulance service award of contract. That resolution is not being voted upon. The resolution 10Z35 is not being voted upon at this meeting. It's been withdrawn by the administration. So 10Z35, the resolution awarding, authorizing the award of contract to McCabe Ambulance Service Incorporated to provide basic life support ambulance service is withdrawn from the agenda. Okay. On the motion to add the resolutions, Councilperson Kajewski? Aye. Ramchal? Aye. Bojano? Aye. Yun? Aye. Osborne? Aye. Coleman? Aye. Rivera? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Lavaro? Aye. Okay, those items have been added to the agenda. Council President, what's your pleasure? Uh, if we could um, have the Jersey City Public Schools with the presentation of the check. Okay. So I just want to welcome the uh, Jersey City Public Schools uh, here. Um, they recently con conducted uh, some fundraising efforts. Uh, to provide relief uh, to the Philippines and uh, the victims of Typhoon Yolanda, Typhoon Haiyan. Um, Ma'am, please step forward. Good evening, Council Members and citizens of Jersey City. The students and staff of the Jersey City Public Schools realize the importance of giving back to the community, both locally and globally. On Wednesday, November 27th, the students at the Bright Street Academy and Dickinson High School organized a district-wide fundraiser, and students and staff members from all over 
Jersey City Public Schools were allowed to wear jeans to school for the day in exchange for a donation to be used in the relief efforts for the victims of Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines. We understand there is still much to be done and our donations will only cover a fraction of what is needed to rebuild the Philippines. But teamwork and resilience are what we in Jersey City are all about. Alone we can do so little, but together we can do so much. It is our honor to be here today to present a check to Council President Lavaro and the Red Cross in the amount of $18,000, $547.38. Behind the podium, we'll get everybody on right camera. Over right behind the podium, we'll zoom out a little bit to get you. Hi, it's great to see you. Thank you. Okay, face the camera so you could be. Uh, Thank you. I'll just say a few words briefly from, from over here. So thank you so much for, to the entire Jersey City Public Schools, sorry, to all the young people, um, the youth, our students in Jersey City, um, for your incredible efforts. Um, there's no shortage in Jersey City of the great generosity. And over the past month, uh, Jersey City residents um, have been stepping forward and just being so generous uh, to the people of the Philippines. So I want to say thank you so much. It, it makes a huge difference. Um, you know, there was more than uh, 1.2 million homes destroyed in the Philippines. Uh, 4 million people are still displaced. Over uh, 5,000 5, people have lost their lives as a result of this uh, incredible tragedy. And so thank you so much. It, it goes a long way towards not just rebuilding the country, but uh, rebuilding people's spirits and hope. So thank you. Council members, what's your pleasure now? I think um, if we could have Councilman Borgiano has uh, another great presentation from the Jersey City Public Schools. Imagine. I was going to the podium. Go to the podium. Podium. Oh, you're going to have to <coughs> Okay, hi. Identify yourself with the court reporter and make your presentation. I would suggest the rest of you come in a little closer so that you could, we could capture all of you. Okay. What, we could, what you could see on the screen is what will be seen on TV. So stay in the screen. Stay in the screen. <laughs> Trying to get you all, but behind one another. You could stand behind one another. You got some of you. You're tall. Just stand. Okay. Stand behind. All right. Your your name, please. Janelle Perez. Janelle Perez. Yes. Okay, Ms. Perez, please begin. Good evening, City Council. Today, my team and I have come to present our project on green infrastructure and water conservation tips. Tell us your name. Noor El Sharkawi. Sorry? Noor El Sharkawi. You don't have to spell that last name. E L S H A R K A W Y. Thank you. Good evening. We are the Conti Cougars. We hope you enjoy our presentation today on managing storm waters during significant storm events such as hurricanes or tropical storms. 
Your name? Uzair Ikram. Spell your last name? I K R A M. City Council, a good portion of Jersey City is filled in land, which makes it incredibly susceptible to flooding from strong precipitation events. Your name? Leilani Maldonado. First name? Leilani Maldonado. We know that flooding is an issue, especially during hurricanes, tropical storms, and nor'easters, but there's nothing we can do to prevent these weather events. This is true, and cities are more susceptible to stormwater because of its development, such as roads and sidewalks, which lead to impervious surfaces, which lead to more stormwater runoff. Steve Asquash. During Hurricane Sandy, the Passaic Valley Sewage Commission in Newark, which is in charge of treating sewage in our area, overflowed. Over 840 gallons of untreated sewage flowed into the Newark Bay. That is right into our backyard. By planting green infrastructure in strategic locations, we can help reduce surface water runoff by over 90%. Joel Vargas, green inf using green infrastructure can minimize the effects of flooding in our area. We didn't get your name, I'm sorry. Joel Vargas. First name? Joel. Joel. Uh, Leila Mejia. Who are you? I am an environmental advocate who believes that green infrastructure is the key to live in a city for many years to come. The future is now. Green infrastructure, does that mean we paint buildings and streets green? Thank you, friend. And <laughs> no. We are not painting structures green. Green infrastructure is an approach to wet weather management that is cost effective, sustainable, and environmentally friendly. The area on PS number five has been known to flood during strong precipitation events. The area on PS number five is an example, is an example of what we want done throughout our city today. With the help of Rutgers University Water Resource Program, we conduct an on-field evaluation of where the runoff comes from, non-point sources of pollution, as well as ways to apply green infrastructure around our school. These are the five green infrastructure ideas that we would like in our school. A green roof is a roof with waterproof membrane. A rain garden is a planted hole that allows runoff water. Rain harvesting is a system that collects water from the roof. Tree boxes and tree boxes are installed under trees to take in runoff water. And permeable pavements is a base that a base that allows water movement through the surface. Now I'm going to explain how the mathematical data supports our solution. Each inch of rain produces about 27,154 gallons of water per acre. Therefore, the 2012 monthly average of 3.85 inches of rain would produce about 49,160 gallons of water, rainwater harvesting. The potential amount of water that could be harvested is based on the portions of the roof where the downspouts are located, or 7,164 square feet. Therefore, about 12,411 gallons of water will be collected. Rain garden. Given that a 72 by 9 foot long will absorb around 389 gallons of water, a rain garden with the same area will absorb 30% more water, or in this case, 505.44 gallons. Tree box. A 48 square foot tree box is designed to capture and treat 10,890 square feet of urban area. As a result, it will absorb approximately 26,136 gallons of stormwater. This all sounds great. Wow, we can use it throughout Jersey City. Yes. Did you know that 37,800 tree boxes can be constructed to absorb rainwater that falls at Jersey City? We suggest that any money Jersey City receives from Sandy Relief Fund should not only be used for rebuilding, but to rebuild in a way that can protect us from future disasters and can also reduce the region's overall risk of climate-related natural disasters like sea level rising, flooding, coastal erosions, we are currently working with the PTA to build rain harvesting systems in the back of our school to aid with stormwater runoff and raise awareness on water conservation. Raylan Ruiz. 
Raylan Ruas. My name is Angelique Aviles. I am an eighth grade special. I am an eighth grade special needs student working in collaboration with the eighth grade general ed on this water conservation project. What is rainwater harvesting? Rainwater harvesting is being mindful of collecting and storing rainwater to provide to the demands of water for drinking, domestic purpose, and irrigation. Rainwater harvesting systems are being used frequently these days. However, in India and other parts of the world where water is scarce, the concept of rainwater harvesting is not new. Rainwater harvesting and techniques have been evolved and developed centuries ago. Where does supply of water from, for Jersey City come from? It is easy to take for granted the supply of running water. Many do not stop to think of where and how we get our water from. Currently, Jersey City residents receive their water supply from New Jersey Boot and Reservoir provided by United Water Incorporated. Key principles that support water democracy. Water is a magical potion of life, nature's most valuable gift. Water is the blood of life, so it must be conserved. There is no substitute for water. Water can be diminished. No one has the right to misuse water. The misuse of water is everyone's business. Water is and will always be part of human rights. My team and I came up with a model that is simple, affordable, and that won't interfere with the school's infrastructure. The model for the school's garden, the rainwater harvesting system for the school's garden will allow for the collection of rainwater in a 300 gallon of water cistern. My team member, Uzair Ikram, will now provide the costs of the materials for the rainwater to build the rainwater harvesting system. I will now explain the cost analysis for a 300-gallon rainwater system with, wing, with a wing structure. The tank will cost $300. The shipping of can tank will cost $300. Leaders and gutters will cost $100. The platform will cost $300. Hardware will cost $100. The plumbing will cost $100. The toolkit will cost $50. And the materials for the shade structure will cost $2,500, making a total cost of $3,750 for the rainwater system. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Thank you. Turn around and show the signs. To really, to really understand what these kids have done, you'd have to look at the project they built. It is absolutely fantastic. And when they showed it in number five school, I had the opportunity to sit to, uh, to meet with them. They showed me everything. And the kids built this, trees around the school, plants, a uh, roof that takes the water and uh, stores it. It is fantastic. And they're the future of our country. And I'll tell you, I am really proud of what you kids have done. And I think everybody in the city should be. Thank you. Thank you. Show them the signs. Show them the signs. Thank you, everyone. All right. Okay, council members, I think we have one more. We have, um, we have three resolutions, Robert, to defer to. It's a, it's a resolution presentation. On the agenda, sir? Yeah, it's, um, the, the three res there are three separate resolutions. The presentation is 10Z30. It's the resolution designating January 11th as Human Trafficking Awareness Day in the city of Jersey City. I'd like to make a motion to defer to 10Z30. Motion. motion by the council president to defer to 10Z30. Second. Seconded by whom? Second. Councilwoman, Councilwoman Coleman. Councilwoman Coleman? Yes. I heard her <laughs> twice. Thank you. On the motion to defer, Councilperson Gajewski? Aye. Ramchal? Aye. Pajano? 
Councilman Baggiano, just to, this is to defer, to defer to another item. Thank you. Councilman Yun? Aye. Council Person Osborne? Aye. Coleman? Aye. Rivera? Aye. Waterman? Aye. President? Aye. All right, we're deferring to 10Z30. 10Z30 is a resolution designating January 11th as Human Trafficking Awareness Day in the City of Jersey City. Would you identify yourself clearly for the record? My name is Stephen DeLuca. With me are Paula Navoso and Rahat Chadha. But we're going to, if they're going to speak, we're going to need their name. Yes. Uh, they will not be speaking. Yeah. Okay. We, yeah, we need the spellings anyway. Okay. Paula, do you want to start? Paula Navoso, good evening. N E V as in Victor, O S O. First name Paula, P A U L A. N E V O S O, Navoso. Chandra? Thank you. Good evening. Rahat Chada. First name is R A H A T. Last name Chada, C H A T H A. And my name is Stephen DeLuca, D-E-L-U-C-A, first name S-T-E-P-H-E-N. Uh, Mr. President, Councilman, uh, I want to thank you for having us here tonight. I stand here as a representative of the New Jersey Coalition Against Human Trafficking. These women on my left and right are here to support the resolution as well. I want to thank the President and the Mayor's Office for supporting our efforts to bring this resolution uh, up for a vote. And uh, the resolution, as was stated, was to declare January 11th Human Trafficking Awareness Day for the City of Jersey City. It's already aware Human Trafficking Awareness Day by state and federal law. What we're doing this is by uh, municipality and by county level, we're trying to get the communities involved in being aware of what human trafficking is and that it's going on right here where we live and where we work. And to give you some, some figures, human trafficking is the second largest criminal enterprise in the world. It is on a par with the arms trade and is second only to the drug trade. But not only that, it's the fastest growing and it has a second, it's got the largest but mar profit margin potential. Because unlike guns and drugs, you can sell a person over and over again. What does this mean for Jersey City? Well, just in July, there was a nationwide bust of sex traffickers nationwide. It was the largest U.S. bust in history. Over 100 people were rescued. About 150 were arrested. Seventy half of those arrests came from Jersey City, Fairfield, and Atlantic City. We are a hub for human trafficking. Not only that, we've got the Super Bowl coming up in a couple of months, and that draws in people from all over the country and around the world as well, and we expect an influx of people being brought in to be trafficked and exploited. So this is our opportunity to show our community and the state and the world that we stand against human trafficking. We're not just saying we agree it's an egregious crime, but we will not tolerate it where we live and work. And I want to thank the mayor's office and the president of this council for meeting with me and talking about what we're going to do to prepare for the upcoming events in January, and I will name some of them. Um, but among other things, we will make sure that anyone who wants to operate in Jersey City uh, will be trained and sign a code of conduct that they will comply with a certain code and, and make sure that they are not employing or helping anyone traffic or exploit anybody here in Jersey City. Um, some upcoming events, January 10th, uh, the Mayor's Office is organizing an Awareness Day for Jersey City. We are inviting all stakeholders to come. It will be from 10 in the morning until 12 noon, and that will be the day for awareness and education and a number of other things. On the 15th, which is the following week, New Jersey Attorney General's Task Force is going to be doing law enforcement training. That includes people at the Jersey City level and the county level as well. Also on January 15th, 
The Coalition Against Human Trafficking is hosting an Awareness Day at Bergen uh, Pack, and at that time we will have a world-renowned speaker, Somali Mom, and we'll also have a live presentation by teams of a performance that was scripted by survivors. We'll also have people who helped uh, create the law that made human tra the Armed Human Trafficking Law the best law in the country. On January 25th and 26th, we will have mobilization training for volunteers to learn how to outreach to local hotels and motels to bring them information on how they can identify potential victims. And on the 30th, the AG's Human Trafficking Task Force will be holding school assemblies at New Jersey City University for middle schoolers from 9 to 11, high schoolers from 1 to 3 in the afternoon, and potentially an assembly for the community in the evening. Uh, thank you very much for your time, and I appreciate your support of this resolution. Thank you, Stephen. Council members, we're going to vote on the resolution 10Z30. Councilperson Gajewski? Aye. Councilperson Ramchal? Aye. Councilperson Bojano? Aye. Councilperson Yun? Aye. Councilperson Osborne? Aye. Councilperson Coleman? Aye. Councilperson Rivera? Aye. Councilperson Waterman? Aye. Council President? I'll, I'll just say thank you, Stephen, for bringing this to the New Jersey Coalition uh, Against Human Trafficking. Thank you for bringing this to the attention of the Council and to the City as well. Um, I want to um, commend the Mayor's Office for really taking leadership on this issue. Um, for, for most people don't know, and, and Stephen already spoke to it, the Super Bowl is a um, just a magnet for human trafficking. And, um, you know, Jersey City and I believe Hunton County and is going to be uh, really tough on this, and the whole state of New Jersey is really taking a tough stand on this. Um, so I commend all of you. You know, we had this here in Jersey City in our backyards not too long ago. I had the privilege of going to St. Peter's University for the presentation that was done there. Um, you know, I'll mention it was sponsored by CarePoint Foundation. <laughs> but, uh, um, That's okay. <laughs> but uh, it was a... It was a presentation on human trafficking that was um, uh, that opened up a lot of eyes to people there. I mean, if you, people remember Prince, uh, the, the gentleman out of Society Hill who was arrested, um, host, holding his his uh, modern day slavery and brothel over in uh, in Society Hill, right under people's eyes um, and noses under there in Society Hill. So, um, you know, I thank you again for bringing this to our attention, and you have our full support. I vote aye. Thank you very much. Robert, uh, I'd like to make a, 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 I'd like to motion to defer to resolution 10D. Second. Wait, wait, wait. Make it a compound motion, if you would, so we could do both. I'll do a compound motion? Yeah. yeah okay. Make a motion to do a compound motion to defer to 10D and 10E. 10D and 10E. 10 what? 10D and 10E. Got it. I second already, right? Thank you, Councilperson Coleman. 10D is a resolution reappointing Frank C. Babcock as a part time judge of the municipal court. And E is a resolution appointing Margaret M. Marley as a full time reappointing Margaret M. Marley as a full-time judge of the Jersey City Municipal Court. On the motion to defer, Councilperson Gajewski? Aye. Ramchal? Aye. Bajano? Aye. Yun? Aye. Osborne? Aye. Coleman? Aye. Rivera? Aye. Waterman? Aye. President? Aye. Motion carries 9-0. We're going to vote on them together, 10-D. And Tenny. Council person, could you they're here. Speak? They're here to speak with us. <laughs> Hi, good evening. That's what I was hoping.
Okay, we're going to vote on the resolutions. That something you'd like to say, Mr. Corporation Counsel? No, go ahead. Okay. Councilperson Kajewski on 10D and 10E. Aye. Councilman Ramchal? Aye. Bajano? Aye. Yun? Aye. Osborne? Um, just, just before I vote, um, congratulations. Um, I, I would like to make a request that to the extent possible you guys can work on your phone service in the court system. Um, there are often times when our constituents try to call and, and can't get anybody on the phone. So I, I would ask that you please try and look at that. And with that, I vote aye. Your vote, Councilperson? Aye. Councilperson Coleman? I would like to say congratulations, and I vote aye. Councilperson Rivera? Congratulations to you both. Simplify. I say aye. Who's in the Marine Corps? I guess you're in the Marine Corps, Frank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll straighten that up. Waterman? Congratulations, I vote aye. Thank you. Council President. Uh, thank you for your, your continued good work at the uh, municipal courts and uh, congratulations. I vote aye. Margaret, you're my neighbor, so congratulations. I wish your mother was here to see this. And Mr. Babcock, I didn't know you were in the Marine Corps. Oh, let, let me set the record before. straight with that. Um, I actually was not in the Marines, but I've run the Marine Corps Marathon nine years in a row. <laughs> so that's the difference. <laughs> and, and that's after hip Five. replacement. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Margaret. Thank you. Thank He's you. our district. <laughs> Margaret's been involved in the neighborhood for years and well known throughout the Hilltop area. And as I said, Margaret, I hope you have many more years on the bench. Thank you, Council, thank you for that vote. Uh, both their honors did insist on coming down because they just wanted to say a quick uh, uh, thank you and, and to you guys. And I know we have a tight schedule, so I'm just going to speak for a quick moment. But. I think we, I, I mean, Frank can speak as well. We, we just want to thank the mayor for, and Corporation Council for putting our names back in for re-nomination, reappointment. We want to thank you all for your vote tonight. Um, I assure you, we work hard on that phone system. I can't get through to the courts sometimes. <laughs> it's a constant debacle that we're constantly working on. But again, thank you for the support. We will continue to serve the city in the most diligent way that we possibly can. Thank you again. I, I uh, reiterate what Margaret just said. Our job is to uh, give the highest integrity to the court system. Uh, we're separate and apart from the other branches of the government, but we all do work hand in hand for working for the people, and we recognize that, and we're here for the people as well. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. President. From the top of the agenda. Thank you, sir. We have four first reading ordinances. 3A is City Ordinance 13143, an ordinance authorizing one approval of a tax exemption for a residential commercial rental project owned by 272 Grove Street Urban Renewal LLC, and two, rescission of Ordinance 07052 and termination of the prior financial agreement. 3B is City Ordinance 13144, an ordinance authorizing the City of Jersey City to sell city-owned property. Located in the borough of Kinnelon, the Township of Jefferson, and the Township of Rockaway, which is known as the Split Rock Reservoir. 3C is City Ordinance 13145, an ordinance authorizing the City of Jersey City to lease 199 through, one, through 205 Summit Avenue, Jersey City with 199-205 Summit Avenue, LLC. 3D is City Ordinance 13146. It's an ordinance supplementing Chapter 332, Vehicles and Traffic, Article 2, Traffic Regulations, Section 332-8, Prohibited Right Turns on Red Signal of the Jersey City Code, Prohibiting the Right Turn at Red Signal at Canal Street and Grand Street, Grand Street and Monmouth Street, Grand Street and Douglas and Arthur Skinner Memorial Drive, formerly known as Jersey Avenue, Grand Street and Barrow Street, Grand Street and Marin Boulevard, and Grand Street and Washington Street, all times, all approaches. 3A through 3D. Robert, before we proceed with that vote, just on 4I, um, 3A will essentially uh, nullify or make. Right, so we're going to defer. 
feet, item 4i, when we get there. Okay. 3a is going to, in, is basically its replacement. So when we get to 3i, we will be voting no on it. We're not, when we're not even going to conduct a public hearing on it. Excuse me, Robert? We're not going to conduct a public hearing. We're going to just go straight to, straight to defeating it. No yeah. I think the, the, the question is whether we should defeat it first before no. approving the first. Okay. No. okay. No, we don't have to. Michael? This here. This is ridiculous. Councilperson Kajewski? Aye. Councilperson Ramchal? Aye. Pagiano? First reading ordinances, sir? It's first reading. First reading. First. I have a little objection to 3D, but uh, I'll go I. Voting I? Yes. Okay. Councilperson Yun? I. Councilperson Osborne? I and, and just for the, the residents who, who might be in the room in case in case you guys didn't catch that, um, there was uh, on the agenda uh, at our last council meeting, there was a re there was a um, an ordinance amending a 25-year abatement at Grove Point, and I think there were a few of us who were concerned about that, and um, we, we voiced our concerns. So item 3A is a replacement, and it's coming in under the mayor's executive order following the new terms for how we hand out abatements, which is a 10-year abatement. Um, so we're not going to renegotiate an existing 25-year abatement. That is going to be nullified, and it's going to be a new 10-year abatement under the new um, executive order. So just clarification, if you are here um, to speak on the abatement, we are going to be voting down um, for I later, and it's going to be the new one under the um, without a public hearing. Without a public hearing um, so I just don't want anybody waiting in the audience for that. Thank you, Councilperson. Councilperson Coleman. Aye. I did. Aye. Great. Thank you, Councilperson Rivera. <laughs> I, I vote I on everything on D, uh, Councilwoman. On D, Councilwoman Osborne. Are we going to look at this a little bit more? Only because uh, today, for example, we have two main water main breaks in downtown. And I think this will probably slow the traffic even more. So I think if we, if we look into it before our second reading, it'd be good, but I'll vote I on it. I think she said. Councilperson Waterman. Not sure. Aye. Council President. Uh, aye. Okay. First reading ordinances introduced. Nine zero three eight through three D. Second reading ordinances. Four A. Four A is City Ordinance thirteen one hundred thirty one, franchise ordinance granting permission to Kennedy Lofts Urban Renewal LLC, its successors and assigns, to allow existing private improvements in the New Kirk Street and Jones Street rights of way adjacent to the property located at one hundred New Kirk Street, Jersey City. New Jersey, also known on the tax map of the City of Jersey City as Block one oh seven. 10703, lot 18. This is a public hearing on the ordinance. Are there any members of the public wishing to be heard? Jason, Jason Barr. Hey, how you doing, folks? Merry Christmas. A question. This uh, facility at 100 New Kirk Street, that is the old Hudson, Hudson County Welfare Building? It was. It was. Hope they make better improvements than it was for the uh, layers that were there. Thank you very much. Hey, Jason. Wow, quick. That was nice. Motion to close. Second. Wait, anyone else wishing to be heard? Motion to close. We have a motion to close by Councilwoman Coltman. Second. By Council President. To close the public hearing. Councilperson Gajewski? Aye. Councilperson Ramchai? Aye. Councilperson Aye. Bargiano? Aye. Yun? Aye. Osborne? Aye. Coleman? Aye. Rivera? Aye. Waterman? 
Lavara. Aye. We have a 9-0 vote to close the public hearing. To consider the final adoption of City Ordinance 13-131, item 4A. Councilperson Gajewski. Aye. Ram Chow. Aye. Fajano. Aye. Yun. Aye. Osborne. Aye. Coleman. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Waterman. Aye. Lavaro. Aye. We have a 9-0 vote for the final adoption of item 4A, City Ordinance 13-131. On to item 4B. 13132. It's an ordinance amending Chapter 296, Streets and Sidewalks, Article 6, Street Name Changes to provide a street naming protocol. This is a public hearing on the ordinance. Are there any members of the public wishing to be heard? Kabila uh, Tayari. Um, to the City Council President, my only uh, question is could you clarify what the uh, specifications and the criteria is uh, in this ordinance and I have um, particular interest because I want to know if we're going to be focusing on heroes and sheroes rather than just anybody and everybody we feel like we want to name a street uh, after so I just want to understand what are the concrete stipulations in this ordinance. Okay. This, this was introduced by Councilman Waterman. Would you like to yeah. speak to it? John, you want to tell him the legalities? Hey, um, I would like to respond to it a little bit. Let, oh. uh, Thank you. John, he, he'll respond and then I'll follow. John who? John Holland. Oh, John Holland. John. Okay. John Holland. Okay. Um, I don't know if you have a copy of the uh, ordinance in front of you, but if you look at uh, Section C, Standards for Commemorative Designation. Uh, it gives a pretty extensive list of the criteria that would be used before someone could be... But what is the critical criteria, John? What is it, what is it in this ordinance, ordinance that makes this... That makes it, first of all, let me say this. Just out of pure ignorance, no, I don't have the ordinance in front of me. But I do, we definitely need some kind of street naming protocol. We definitely need a protocol that focuses on people who have done extraordinary things either in our city or from our city who's done something in the state or in the nation. But this just naming streets just to be naming stuff. Right. So I wanted to know what concretely uh, makes this a strong ordinance when it comes Are to... Are you talking this. about dedications, uh, Kabili, or or the actual naming of new streets? Uh, well, I was seeing the dedication and the naming would be mm -hmm. one of name If I wanted to name a street Rolanda Lavaro, what in this ordinance makes Rolanda Lavaro have to stand out and really deserve to have this street named after him versus yeah. Kabiri Tayyip? First of all, it's the contribution. Second of all, there will be a committee that will decide, okay? Not only that, the community input will be a part of it, all right? So all of that is entailed in the ordinance, in details, okay? Just to be specific, there are over uh, 11 points listed in the ordinance to, to provide guidance as to how to identify who should be named or honored in this process. It asks for things like people who have made considerable contributions to the community. It talks about uh, things like uh, um, recognizing individuals that have rare, have done something rare. Mr. Or Court, Mr. Council, you don't have to go any further. Right. Uh, Councilwoman uh, Waterman, that's exactly what I'm talking about. God bless you and thank you for that. Thank you. Public hearing on the ordinance. Who's first? I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yvonne Walser. One of the problems I have with the city for the last, I don't know, maybe the 70s, we've been taking streets that had historical significance to the history of Jersey City, and we've been renaming them. An example is Henderson Street. Henderson Pottery employed a lot of the Irish at a time when Irish people could not get a job. 
So we had the Henderson Pottery, which was downtown Jersey City, won international awards. One of the brothers was a mayor of Jersey City. But we took his name and we renamed it to somebody who did not live in Jersey City. Then we had Railroad Avenue. Those people who built the, the era of the railroad, it was named after the workers. It's been renamed again. I have a real problem with people coming in for a political agenda and they rename the street not realizing that it was named for a reason. It was part of the city's history. What people do not realize, which really annoys me, is that you have Jersey City on Mercer Street during World War I and World War II. You had a lot of immigrants. You had a lot of immigrant housing there. And so many people from World War I and World War II actually died. And we had an audience call back many, many years ago from the, uh, that called that old glory because they won the war through their blood. We won wars because of those immigrants. And we come in later on and we just rename things. So I have a real problem with the city renaming things, not knowing that they're going to rename something that has a significant history to the city. And I resent that. I really do. Another example I have to say, Communipore. I mean, I realize that we renamed Communipore Avenue uh, because it, it was for the advertisement. But we're talking about that was part of a historical name. It talked about our relationship with the Native Americans who lived here. Communipore, very important. There's a lot of, the city of Jersey City existed before the state of New Jersey existed, number one. We were here first. The first judicial act in terms of the courts happened here, not in Trenton. So the problem I have is that we come along for political, I'm not going to be talking about ethnic things or that, but we come along to win certain votes and rename an area. And you know, people have died and gave blood, and we recognize them, and maybe 80 years down the road, that particular group of people have maybe has passed away. You just don't go around renaming Yvonne, just so you can have that. Yvonne, if I can, <laughs> Councilman Waterman drafted this and, and then presented to the caucus. It, it sets out criteria with the intention of doing exactly well, thank um, you. what you, you talked about, depoliticizing and not allowing council members or the administration or others um, moving forward to, to not be able to utilize street namings as, as a political tool. Well, thank for, you very much. Getting. But I, I, I definitely okay. think that some of the names that have been, they should be recognized. There should be markers in the street. This is a very historical place. And the, the fact that we have, there were markers at one time that talked about Old Glory or Mercer Street. Well, who are they? There were certain markers in the city that, that talked about that. So many young immigrant boys, literally boys, because they were, they died. I mean, and we renamed them, and we should really go back to our history and pass that along to the next generation because it didn't start with the person coming here now. This, this city was incorporated actually in 1660 up in the four corners, the, right there. And there's no really, it's a disgrace, I have to borrow a term from my councilman, that those four corners there is not recognized. That was where the city started right there and you would not know if you go to any other city you will there'll be all kind of markers there about the historic significance of that particular area and right now that's a dump so thank you very much Yvonne I'd like yeah. to also add one Fine. Actually, the thing that the councilwoman Fine. that the councilwoman brought to the attention of everyone is that there will be no more changing the name it will be a dedication on that block of the person that you are uh, uh, honoring or trying to bring to the attention of the community, but you will not change the original name of the street. It'll be a dedication on that street. So she's already see the same thing that you did, and she's put that in place already. And we need historical markers to recognize the things that were lost, because Mercer Street, you had back the term Old Glory. Those men died for that distinction. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jason Berg, when I was listening to my colleague, I thought about even bringing in the historical commission on this body. That way we can actually look at the names that have been changed. No dishonor to others who've come before, but I found one, 
Jackson Avenue was changed to Martha Luther King Boulevard or Drive, it uh, took a lot. It, it un took away the Jackson family, who were a black prominent family in Jersey City, right. gave it to uh, Martha Luther King. I'm not against naming the street after a, a famous leader. But we really have to give back at the honor to our forefathers in this city. And we really have to start looking at what we've done and what's been changed. I like, really like this way of having uh, inter interaction with different organizations and committees, and that makes it um, a more sound of approval. I mean, we need recognition for We have a lot of great people in our community. We need the recognition, but we don't need to have all those street signs taken down and removed and pay for that. And I'll tell you the one thing, the street signs today they make are putrid. They're not even, they're not even in, uh, made that they were that they can actually see the name and you sneeze on them and the name uh, falls off. So if we're going to do anything with street signs, you know, that's another thing we got to look at, the quality that we have in our street signs. You can't even read some of these signs yet. We only have two people in the city doing all the signs. I brought that up the last time. I don't know if anyone did an investigation on that. I did. All right. How many people do we have? We have two. Yes. Oh, it's a wonderful confirmation of confirmation of facts. <laughs> but again, this is very good. I'm I'm glad that uh, this body is starting to think for the people and think for the the greatness of every citizen that resides here now and in the future. We are great people, but again, we lose our past when we play games with our signs of our times. Thank you. Public hearing on the ordinance. Anyone else? Motion. Motion. Second. <laughs> Motion by Council. Motion Candace. by Councilwoman Osborne. Seconded by Councilwoman Coleman. That was a close one. Close call. <laughs> Councilperson Kajewski to close. Aye. Ramchal? Aye. Bajano? Aye. Yun? Aye. Osborne? Aye. Coleman? Aye. Rivera? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Lavaro? Aye. We have a 9 0 vote for the close of the public hearing. For final adoption. Councilperson Kajewski? Aye. Ramchal? Robert, just before I vote, I want to thank my colleague, uh, Councilman at Large, uh, Joyce Waterman. Great job in putting this ordinance together, and I want to thank uh, Cooperation Council and John Hallen, uh, who helped put this ordinance together. Thank you, guys. Great job. And with that, I vote aye. Bajano? Aye. Yun? Aye. Osborne? Aye. Coleman? I, I, too, would like to say thank you to Councilwoman Waterman, because when she bought the first draft of this ordinance to me. I said, you have to hurry up with this because there was four people asking me to name a street after them that I didn't even know. And I, I didn't know how I was going to do that as a new council person. And I just love Councilwoman Waterman because now all I have to do is give them an application and I'm no longer responsible. So I, I really, <laughs> I really like that. Thank you, Councilwoman. And I vote aye. Councilman Rivera? I vote aye. Councilperson Waterman? Um, before I cast my vote, I want to thank um, Corporate Council for helping me on the issue of naming and renaming the streets. I believe Jersey City is a great city. I believe there are so many people who contribute to the city, and I think I do believe that they should be honored. Not only that, that the community should have a part in honoring them. So when we did this draft, we had the community in mind to make sure the community had a voice. There will be a, a committee that will sit and make a decision on basically who name should, you know, what name should go on in the community. And also with Yvonne, the historical portion, that is important for our city. So we will know our history and our children will remember our history. So with that in mind, I vote aye and I thank you, Corporate Council, for your help. Council President. I'll, I'll just acknowledge my colleague, Councilman Waterman. Great job. Um, just for a little history and context for folks, the previous council thought of trying to do this as well, and it never got done. So Councilman Waterman, uh, great job, and uh, I vote aye. City Ordinance 13-132, item 4B, has been adopted 9-0. On to item 4C, 
4C is 13133. It's an ordinance supplementing the traffic code, Chapter 332, Vehicles and Traffic, Article 2, Traffic, traffic Regulation, Section 332-7, prohibited turns at intersections of the Jersey City Traffic Code, prohibiting the left turn for vehicles eastbound on Hoboken Avenue to northbound on Baldwin Avenue daily. This is a public hearing on the ordinance. Jason Berg. Yeah. Question. On C and D, was a, were the studies done, uh, a traffic studies done, so this is uh, being done thoughtfully or just a whim? What? Traffic study. What? How do you do a traffic study? A traffic study is simply to see how the traffic goes into the right place, the wrong place. I mean, the circles were a great idea, but we don't have any more circles like the, around Jersey City. I'm just guessing, was a study done of traffic for these ordinances? Jason, on this uh, Baldwin Avenue, on Baldwin Avenue, there was a study. It was a dangerous uh, section there, people making a left-hand turn with people coming off the state highway. So there was, and there was a study done there. But that's good. So the study was done and is available to the uh, people, unlike uh, some of the OSHA's uh, things I, I've, no, I've asked for other reports. I'm still waiting for a report that you all people got about the 24-7 uh, service. I still haven't received it from the city. Oh, oh, the, I, it's just, just something. I'm just looking for information. I'm just stating a fact. It's out of order. Specific ordinance? Yes. yes. Speak right. to this ordinance. All right. Thank you very much. That was a good study. Oh, by the way, how many people have been hurt? What? With the study, with it there, to show it's dangerous, I'm asking a fact. Uh, how many people have been hurt by at this, this not being passed? At this intersection, there's been quite a few accidents. And if you want to probably ask the statistics, call Monty down in traffic engineering or ask the MC because uh, it's, it's been a dangerous intersection there. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Public hearing on the ordinance. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Motion. Motion. Second. Motion by? Ramshaw. Ramshaw. Oh, because you? Gentlemen, Sorry. On this traffic I, I, ordinance? Yes. I, I think this gentleman makes a very good point because, you know, well, I, I live in the city and I drive in the city. Um, I can appreciate some of the signs that have been up. I think that they uh, help to control traffic a little better. I do have some concern about some signs, um, like the do not turn on red, because there's a lot of traffic that's jammed on Marin Boulevard off of Grand Street. And the no turn on red there is causing more of a problem, not less of a problem. Because I don't know if there's something that you can do with the traffic lights and coordination. No, no, no. This is, so, th this is a specific to this ordinance mm -hmm. at Hoboken Avenue. And Baldwin. Not oh, this, doesn't, this, this doesn't have to do with all the signs? This is a forum on traffic. Oh. You have to speak They're working to on what ordinance. you're talking about. Oh, anyway. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm What's sorry. your name? My name is Lisa Watson. Lisa Watson. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Ms. Watson. Okay, we had Councilman Ramchal make the motion to close. Second, Councilwoman Coleman. Close the public hearing. Councilperson Gajewski. Aye. Ramchal. Aye. Bajano. Aye. Yun. Aye. Osborne? Aye. Coleman? Aye. Rivera? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Lavara? Aye. We have 9-0 vote to close the public hearing to consider the final adoption of item 4C-13133. Councilperson Gajewski? Aye. Ram Chow? Great job, Rich. Aye. Bajiano? Yun. Aye. Osborne. Aye. Coleman. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Waterman. Aye. Lavara. Aye. We have a 9 0 vote for the final adoption of City Ordinance 13133. On to item 4D. 4D. Another traffic ordinance, an ordinance supplementing Chapter 332, Vehicles and Traffic, Article 2, Traffic Regulations, 
amending section 332-5, one-way streets of the Jersey City Code, designating the entire length of Sales Street as a one-way southbound. This is a public hearing on the ordinance. Are there any members of the public wishing to be heard? Motion. Second. Second. We have a motion by the council president, seconded by council, council person Paulman. Yeah. To close the public hearing. Council person Gajewski. Aye. Ram Chow. Aye. Bajiano. Aye. Yun. Aye. Osborne. Aye. Coleman. Aye. Rivera. Waterman. Aye. Mavaro. Aye. We have a 9 0 vote to close the public hearing for the final adoption of City Ordinance 13 134. Council Person Gajewski. Aye. Ram Chow. Aye. Bajano. Aye. Yun. Aye. Osborne. Aye. Coleman. Aye. Rivera. Waterman. Aye. Lavaro. Aye. We have a 9 0 vote for the final adoption of item 4D, City Ordinance 13 134. Wait. 13136 is item 4E. Another traffic ordinance. It's an ordinance supplementing Chapter 332. Vehicles and Traffic, Article <laughs> 2. Traffic Regulations, Section 332 8, prohibited right turns on red signal of the Jersey City Traffic Code, prohibiting the right turn on red signal for vehicles traveling southbound and northbound on Westside Avenue turning westbound and eastbound onto Belmont Avenue all times. This is a public hearing on the ordinance. Are there any members of the public wishing to be heard? Jason Berg. Do you drive, Jason? Oh, yes, I drive people crazy. I have a license to do that. <laughs> statutes, laws, codes, ordinances are for the corporations. Unfortunately, our wonderful government went and stole our freedom when they passed the 14th Amendment. That I'm sorry. Made, no, 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 no. I, I, it has to do with the ordinance. I'm just being here to speak to the ordinance. The ordinance is... The ordinance the ordinance is speak to the ordinance. Question. All right. Personally, why? Is there a study? Oh, yeah. In the fact sheet, it reads, reasons for the proposed program or project, being that this intersection goes through a county park and it is heavily used by constituents daily, it has been requested by the county engineer that the right turn on the red signal be prohibited for vehicles traveling southbound and northbound on West Side Avenue, turning west and east onto Belmont Avenue. I, I would ask if we could provide Mr. Berg, before every meeting, a complete copy of all of the resolutions completely written out so that he may have the advantage because he asks questions because they're not yeah. they're Council not President, I appreciate that, uh, that, that request. You're able to go uh, pick up copies of, uh, of documents at the clerk's office. They're online. It's and online. they're available online. Right. Well, you know what? Well, it just would be simple. I wouldn't have to come up here. If simple questions of who, what, when, where, why, and how were addressed before as it was read, so I don't have to come up here and bother you folks. I know I'm a nuisance, but you know it's my actual action of my freedom of speech to make queries of a government that gives it. No, 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 no. We're way you're off topic you're, right you're now. telling me to do something. I'm telling you to do something too. Bring it back. Bring it back to the agenda. I, I, I will. But the thing is, I, I, things are online. You're going to send me an email. I mean, my email is all over the place. And uh, fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll be coming up again. <laughs> this is a public hearing on this ordinance. Anyone else wishing to Back be heard? Motion. It was motion by Councilman Waterman, seconded by Councilman Ramshaw. We have a motion by Council Person Waterman, seconded by Councilman Ramchow. Close the public hearing. 
Councilperson Kajewski? Aye. Ramchal? Aye. Bajano? Aye. Yun? Aye. Osborne? Aye. Coleman? Aye. Rivera? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Lavaro? Aye. We have a 9 0 vote to close the public hearing for the final adoption of City Ordinance 13136. Councilperson Gajewski? Aye. Ramchal? Aye. Bajano? Aye. Yun? Aye. Osborne? Aye. Coleman? Aye. Rivera? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Lavaro? Aye. We have a 9 0 vote. For the final adoption of City Ordinance 13136, item 4E on the agenda. 4F, City Ordinance 13138, an ordinance of the Municipal Council of the City of Jersey City adopting amendments to the Land Development Ordinance, Section 345-66, Landscaping for the Required Types of Street Trees. Hi, Ivan. Well, sir? Uh, yes, I don't know what type of trees you're referring to, but I do know that some of the sidewalks in Jersey City are very narrow, and when trees are planted, about seven years later, you see the sidewalks coming up. I've always had the opinion that when you have residential streets and they're somewhat narrow, the trees should be in potted plants, two pots, because you know, no, down the road, someone's going to fall. Down the road, someone's going to have a hardship. Now, I don't know what type of trees um, you're referring to, but I can tell you, you walk down Van Ross, or no, as you walk down York Street facing Van Ross Park, the, the sidewalks is like this from the trees that was planted there in the 70s, because the roots are just, uh, just grew and grew. And I was actually the president of Van Ross Park Association, and I was told by the city government, a city planner, that these trees will, will not grow very tall, they will just get wide. Well, the city did not tell me the truth because the trees were extremely long, growing into actually the buildings, and the sidewalks just broke up. And I feel bad because as the president of the Amos Park Association, I encouraged the people to plant these trees. Even I had one planted and it grew into my water main line and I had to have that the tree removed. So I am concerned about what the city will plant down the road because it sounds like a good idea. And then later on, we stuck with the problems of sidewalks coming up or going to someone's sewer line. And uh, this $2 or $4 treat that I paid for ended up costing me hundreds of dollars in, in sewer bills. I had to have this, my sewer cleaned out over and over again because it grew. The roots grew a great deal. So um, I'm just curious, what are you going to put Yvonne. there Yvonne. in terms of trees? Yvonne? Yeah, Yvonne, let me tell you, I don't, I don't know what the other previous administration studied, but I can tell you yes. that Michael Yoon, yes. Councilman Yoon, and his aide have done extensive studies yes. on trees to the point that, you know, I'm even speaking trees every day here. But the <laughs> man, this, this, uh, this team has really, really proactively worked on this with DPW. Uh, they've done extensive, extensive research. I can I guarantee you that we'll be fine. Well, there'll be shallow roots. That's what the concern is. I mean, that's the problem we have. If you, I mean, I worked in Manhattan, you know, most of my life. And the one thing about Manhattan, they replace the sidewalk like every several years. That's not the case in Jersey City. The sidewalk set on York Street was there 40 years ago. We don't replace sidewalks, and we have these trees growing, growing, and growing. I'm concerned now that I'm, you know, I'm not in my 20s anymore. I don't want to walk down the street and uh, fall because the Fine. sidewalk is Donovan coming is. up because of the tree roots. Yvonne, I think David wants to speak. Oh, Yvonne, you know what? Ms. Bowser, the, the trees that were removed from the list, and there's extensive work that was done on this, one because of certain... Certain trees were that we don't want to use anymore because invasive invasive species like the Asian longhorn beetle tend to uh, congregate in them. Also, they also took away trees that were inappropriate for urban street urban streets, just like like you were saying. And so, therefore, the list has been shortened to take care of that and to deal with that. So, our list this list, if you look at the ordinance, this list is much shorter than it used to be. And uh, the, there's a list of small, medium, and large trees, depending on the appropriateness for that sidewalk. 
<laughs> and all of them, all of them, uh, basically based on the root structure and various and aesthetic traffic. I'm sorry, yeah, aesthetic you know, attractiveness. Yeah, all the tree most of is all one uh, city side of friendly trees we pick up, and if any questions. Willow might add one of the committee person select the trees, so she can explain to the you know all those uh, facts. Okay, I so when we, we put some time. We know that a lot of complaint from the people actually tree destroy sidewalk and the creative of public hazard. So we consider all those facts. We pick up the right tree for the city of Georgia City. Okay. I just wish you would consider down okay. the road is to have trees in, in a pot instead of on a sidewalk, put on the sidewalk. Because down the road, I mean, it might not be your turn, but when the council in the 70s went through this thing of saying we should have trees, they had the best attentions, uh, you know, around. But those particular trees are like monsters right now, and they have destroyed the sidewalks. So I like to see for an urban area, especially one with really narrow streets and narrow sidewalks, you know, maybe we should be going into a potted you know, tree plants. The, the size of a tree, we have to, you know, consider about the power line. So all those effects, we put in our effort to select the right one. But if you want, I like to recommend the willow, and that she's going to expand all the tree, individual trees, while we select the, what is the reason is good for city of Georgia City, especially urban city sidewalk. Okay. 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 Thank you about the issue it. of the wires. That's an excellent point. But, uh, you know, for the, for the other end is the sidewalks for me right now. I, I, the city does not maintain the, the streets. Once a tree is put in, they ignore the sidewalks. The, if, the, if it starts to lift up, the city does not go back and maintain it. And that's the problem I have. It becomes the issue of the landlord who owns that. So you have, if you have like a three-family house and the city puts in a tree for you, that's your responsibility, and that's the root system for the sidewalks to go up. Well, that's your responsibility, but the city put it in. Yes, we understand. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Motion. Now we have Jason. Nope. No, Jason. Jason. Sorry to disappoint you for not uh, wanting to come up. You heard a while uh, trees, very important. I hope on that list that you produced, it, it takes out the pear tree that when it goes into spring, it smells like something stale. It's called a peach tree. It gives little, little, little peach nuts. And it's another tree that does a good lifting. Is that peach tree on that list? I hope we'll take it off. We'll take the last list. Yeah. The, can't you explain to yeah. the uh, peach tree? And I just heard from Mr. Dunley that it's off the list, thank God. But that's great. But also the fact, though, that the property is in front where the tree is. It is supposed to be maintained, or it's supposed to be, it's our property, but the tree is planted by the city. There was a city code that prevents individuals from touching these trees, yet we don't have enough uh, tree surgeons to do that. I, uh, I don't know if the city has contracted out for the tree trimming. They are going to contract it out, Jason. All right, because I know we have two trucks and a, and a half a crew, and that uh, doesn't crew up right. Now, an interesting thing about trees is that as much as you want them to grow, their, their roots are very shallow. Even the oak tree, which you think is strong, has a very shallow root system. So in a storm, when it finally gets weak, it does fall down, and these plants, these trees do uh, fall down. I know we want to keep trees there, but again, as soon as a tree... Jason, uh, are you a tree expert? Uh, yes, I'm a landscaper for 44 years. Yes. I've been uh, well, uh, well clipped. And uh, trees are very important. Actually, we should have more trees in this city than we do. And there should be, again, I mean, the one tree that was really beautiful is the mulberry uh, tree that, if it's trimmed nice, grows like a, can a nice canopy. If you go to Stegman Place, it is, uh, there are three trees left from when I, before I was born. I'm 60 years old. And uh, I've been taking care of them and waiting on the city to do something. Well, 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 I'm, well, well the, the musings on what you consider the trees to be nice well, ones are interesting. If you could speak to the ordinance as to whether or not the trees that are specifically identified as well as those that have been removed. 
I don't speak have directly my, to those questions. Right 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 Thank you. you. Right I don't have my, uh, my uh, tree book with me. There is, I do have a tree book. And uh, I'm sorry, I can't address it without the facts. But again, if you've done your research correctly, I hope you do develop trees. I mean, one thing that's really bad is the, as Ms. Nguyen said, the growing up of the trees into the uh, wires. I mean, I'd love to be able to have a, wire, a wireless system that uh, doesn't go into the trees. I mean, on my block in Neptune Avenue, I'd had more, more uh, wires <laughs> knocked down, being pulled down by normally, uh, normal freight train. Uh, oh, freight Jason, trains. I, d I don't want to cut your speak. You, you no, should turn no. around, Jason. We have a consideration side the room. <laughs> we consider a power uh, line. Excuse me. We want That's to make not sure me. That Oh, yeah, I must have really bad B.O. So we all consider there are three major facts. You know, we consider three major facts, and then we put you a lot of time to select the right tree, and also uh, provide enough shade in the Georgia city. So please. Unbelievable. If any more detailed information, I think we can answer as a committee person, so we'll help you. Uh, who's that committee person? Yes. We will. Hello. Okay. We will. Yeah. Here. We will. Would you raise your hand just one minute? Okay. She's I the will. Well. Jason, she's oh. even named oh. after a tree. Yes. And they. Thank you, Jason. I would say something crude, but I'm not. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Great, but, uh, by the way, if if people are really here to do something and speak, thank you. They should be here all the time. Jason, you're not. Thank you. You're not here to speak on that. You've Step away from the mic. Step back, please, from the, the podium. Motion to close. <laughs> Ordinance on the yes. tree. Or this is a public hearing on trees. Motion. Anyone? Second. Motion by council person. Second by. Council person Coleman. Seconded by council person Osborne. Close the public hearing. Council person Gajewski. Aye. Ramchow. Aye. Bajano. Aye. Yun. Aye. Osborne. Aye. Coleman. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Waterman. Aye. Lavaro. Aye. We have a 9 0 vote to close the public hearing. For the final adoption of City Ordinance 13138, item 4F, Councilperson Kajewski. Aye. Ramcha. Aye. Bajano. Aye. Yun. Aye. Osborne. Aye. Coleman. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Waterman. Aye. Council President. Aye. Adopted 9-0, City Ordinance 13-138, Item 4-F. Okay, on to item 4G. Item 4G is City Ordinance 13139. It's an ordinance authorizing an amendment to a lease agreement with Rand Parking Incorporated for parking located at 2 Journal Square Plaza. This is a public hearing on the ordinance. Yes, right. um, my concern is that just go slowly, please. Um, you already have the space in one general square. And taking additional 20 spaces, you don't want that building. You don't, you don't lease that part of the number two general square. All you have to do is put a two-tier system, put some metal frames. You don't have to pay $3,000 a month. I hope you'll consider that. You, you already own, you already leased, they've given the parking spaces for you behind one general square. All you need to put is you know, a two-tier system. Get some frames and tell the guy and pay him something. Here, every time you come here, you, know, you are leasing spaces. Nobody provides parking spaces in the private sector. So you should work with that landlord instead of, instead of leasing additional spaces from here. And every time we go in front of uh, one John Square Plaza, animal control cause. Everybody's blocked. You have taken a lane already. And you can solve the problem other way. Take the cottage street area. You make it only for official vehicles. 
you are charging 25 cents for half an hour over there. You can use that space. We, all you have to do is put a sign over there for official business from morning 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock. And you can park over there. This is waste of money. I think you should tell them to go back and study into that. You can save this money if you put a two-tier system, which is very common in New York City. They have the metal frames. When the first car comes in, they put it up. Second car goes and stays in the down. You have space behind the one John Square Plaza. I think you should use that. Thank you. Riaz, just so you know, this, um, this is actually amending the contract to be six months shorter versus longer than what we have today. So it expires currently on December 14th. This is making it expire on uh, back in July, I believe. So this is actually shortening it. But your point is well taken um, about the city in parking spots. All right, thank you. We shouldn't even be up in Journal Square. And you know why this problem occurred? Because they sold <laughs> 8 Erie Street, where we had parking in the back, and the city sold all that property off. It's a shame. Yeah, I agree with you. Thank you. Jason back. Berg, I'm back. Now, how many leases bots are we getting with this new lease? And that was what and what's the term to, to a lease. You might not have been listening a moment ago. No. But it was the term to the lease is being reduced by a term of six months. Yes. But, I, but that wasn't my issue. My issue was how many cars were there. Jason, it's not rental I mean space. <laughs> They have uh, just we talk about the term of the lease, you know, like a six months shorter than what original contract. It's just amending the term, you know. So already this one they proved that now now 2012 already they rented already. Just we adjust the term of the lease. That's what we're doing now. So you're reducing it so you get out of the contract. Yeah, correct. Is that okay. okay? And I gotta agree with you, uh, Richard. We, we shouldn't have uh, sold the Erie Street, and we should work in cooperation with the uh, county for the old Goldman Building on Bergen Avenue. Because I mean, they—they they, it's already off the rolls. Might as well be able to use that building and make a use of uh, effective use of uh, county property. We're already, we are already paying for it in Jersey City, which pays majority of the taxes in this county anyway. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Public hearing on the ordinance. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Motion. Sure. Second. I have heard a motion by Councilman Rivera. You want to have the second, Councilwoman Coleman? Yes. Close the public hearing. Councilperson Kajewski? Aye. Ramchal? Aye. Pagiano? Aye. Yun? Aye. Osborne? Aye. Coleman? Aye. Rivera? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Lavaro. Aye. We have a 9 0 vote to close the public hearing for final adoption of item 4G, City Ordinance 13139. Councilperson Gajewski? Aye. <coughs> Ramchal? Aye. Bajano? Aye. Yun? Aye. Osborne? Aye. Coleman? Aye. Rivera? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Lavaro. Yeah, b before I vote, I just, I just want to apologize to the hundreds of people here who were here waiting and you know mr berg you may find this an amusing um for you for your amusement you may think so no you're not entitled to come back up here so <laughs> oh no i have the right you are you are out of line sir i'm speaking you are completely out of line and if you continue i'll ask to have you removed oh my freedom of speech is being removed Yes. <laughs> you do not have the opportunity to speak. I am voting and speaking. You don't have the opportunity. It is an affront to, to me and, and, and to the process here that people came here who, who normally don't come to a meeting and they felt strongly about an issue and they walked out of this room because your nonsensical uh, musings that go on here in this council, it is, it is debilitating to, to this entire council and this entire process. And you may find it amusing. You may, you may get some, some gratification out of it. I don't know what it is that motivates you in this process, but there's a reason why when somebody mentioned you as the Ted Cruz, and you're not getting much sympathy about it when you called and screamed that that's, that's so inappropriate to call me the Ted Cruz um, in the room. Um, it's for that very reason, and I think pretty much, and I, I can't say that I would speak for my council colleagues on this, 
but, you know, I'm probably the only one who's w willing to speak up about it because it's politically inappropriate for me to say that. But, you know, I'm so, so angered and upset that so many people had to leave this room when they, when they wanted to say something and speak to the, to speak to an important issue that was coming before this, this council. So with that, I vote aye on this and, I have no and know that I've got, I've got more no time with you. But we are the people. We you're out of line. Consent you're, you're out of line. The next, because, next ordinance is City Ordinance 13141. It's an ordinance amending Chapter 3, Administration of Government, Article 11, Department of Public Safety, Division of Police, Section 85.1, Off Duty Assignments of the Jersey City Code. Your name, please? <coughs> Patricia Waiters. Um, for this ordinance, can I have a little bit of clarification, please? I'm confused to the language. Is this speaking on administration level or the employees, the police department employees? This ordinance is going to affect the way that off-duty assignments are worked by the Jersey City Police. Right. The police officers, too. This include the staff? Type of jobs that are going to be done. I'll turn it over to the Corporation Council. Please. This ordinance will uh, address how the police department processes requests for off-duty assignments and then assigns them out to police officers. Is that including overtime, sir? Uh, this includes off-duty. Overtime is different. Off uh, overtime is when an officer is assigned out by the police department in excess of the uh, amount of time that they are supposed to be working. All right. Well, can okay. I have a, a hypothetical? Can I just ask a hypothetical question? I don't want to scream. I usually be a little voracious. That's why I'm backing up. A hypothetical question. If you're an employee, a police officer, d this will affect him as far as making um, off-duty decisions, like yes. if he was to be called in? This will specifically address how the police department receives requests for off-duty assignments, processes those requests, and then offers them out for assignment to police Thank officers. Thank you so much for your clarification, Council. Um, Eva Von also I would like to know how will this affect the homeowner. It, why, um, I myself, in the about 12 years ago, had to pay $250 for an off-duty officer to come to my house. He was actually on the stoop while they opened up the street. That particular job, if it was in New York City, I would not have to pay that kind of money. And to me, it's like another level of tax I have to pay. Um, what jobs are we asking? I can see you're asking big business to do certain things, but I have a real problem with the city asking a small homeowner to pay this. I had my next door neighbor had to pay for an off-duty cop when he received a delivery of fencing. I know somebody else had to pay for an off-duty cop, something else. I don't think it is appropriate. We pay enough tax and water, and then to pay for an off-duty cop for, for a homeowner, that's, that's something very minor. If that job was done in New York City, and I go to, I mean, Manhattan, it's 42nd Street. They're digging 42nd Street. Many times I've seen that. I don't see one off-duty cop. But in Jersey City, on York Street, I had to pay an off-duty cop who basically was blocking my door because he was in the way in terms of the street. So I understand you want to re do this, but if you're not going to take away some of the restrictions for the homeowner, then I don't see any changes at all. I mean, that, that is a real burden to have that done. Yeah, well, that's a great question. Um, thank you for it. This ordinance is a, a, a great step toward alleviating some of the concerns that you've raised. But it doesn't alleviate it at this moment, I'm trying to say, does it? It will begin to alleviate it at this moment. Because it will? Could you because, explain it? Because it will empower our public safety department to assess the types of uh, jobs that require officers versus the types that do not require officers, and it will allow the uh, department to make decisions based on what is best for an individual, for the residents in general, on an individual job. So who will make that decision? The public safety director will make that decision? There will be a civilian uh, employee who will make the decision um, in conjunction with the public safety director. So say hypothetically, I have to, I have a, a, a two-family house and I'm having some work done. Who will I go to appeal that? You would make your application to the department, or sorry, to the uh, division in the police department that will be processing the requests. 
and then that decision will come from them as to whether an officer is required. Then if you have an issue with that decision, you would appeal it to the Public Safety Director. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yvonne, this issue is not closed yet because next week, uh, Shay and the unions are going to sit down on some of the issues you are talking about. I was involved with the meetings with this, and they're all going to work out everything. Thank you. Kabili uh, Chayeti, through the President. Uh, Mr. President, um, will they be um, a pool of some kind, a financial pool of some kind that um, has oversight over this off-duty money? I mean, how how is it how is it being um, uh, regulated? Who I mean, because these off-duty accounts. First of all, I want to say this. I think it's good that there is some kind of oversight being put in place. I first want to say that. Second of all, I do have a concern, uh, not only just about the homeowner, but small community groups having to pay all of these off-duty fees, uh, and then they are required, if they don't pay these off-duty fees, then they can't, you know, have certain kinds of functions. But also, though, I'm more concerned about how the off-duty monies are actually being uh, controlled. Is that in this ordinance? Uh, in this ordinance, we will have a civilian uh, a, a person responsible for the accounting of the off-duty uh, collection. This, all monies that come into the city, as you're aware, are subject to our audit as well. So it will be guided by those principles. And to your specific point, as to the charity groups, uh, this is one of those areas that were of great concern to this body. And there are uh, components of this ordinance which will allow the director to waive certain fees so that the burden to the um, a nonprofit group is as minimal as possible. Plus, the ordinance will allow for flexibility so that should a um, nonprofit have some sort of event we can be flexible as to how we staff that event to assure security as well as uh, coverage. Okay? Um, I, I'm glad to hear that because there's even been times where there have been officers who have volunteered for nonprofit groups and have not been allowed to do that. So at least the nonprofit group could have the affair and at the same time not have that kind of overhead. So I'm very glad to hear that. The other thing I want to say is that I listened to some of this public discussion. I think that, and with a limited understanding, but at least in all due respect and concern for the police officers, I do think that sincerely, if they come in for one hour's worth of work or two hours' worth of work, if they are willing to say, watch over chairs for the next two hours and be paid whatever that rate is. You know, as long as they're not trying to decide what the work is, where the work is, I, I really think there needs to be some serious, sensitive discussions uh, about that. But I'm very glad to hear about the waiver process. And yes, I will say this, Mr. Corporation Counsel, as we all know, there are certain mandatory audits and this, that, and the other, but let us be real. We need to make sure that we have some strict oversight. So thank you. Public hearing on the ordinance. Anyone else wishing to be heard? Motion. Second. By Council Person Lavaro. <coughs> Seconded by Councilwoman <coughs> Coleman. Veterans. Close public hearing, Councilperson Gajewski. Aye. Ram Chah. Aye. Bajano. Aye. Council Aye. Yun. Aye. Osborne. Aye. Coleman. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Waterman. Aye. Count Council President. Aye. Nine zero vote to close the public hearing for final adoption of item four. H on today's agenda, item ordinance 13141, Councilperson Gajewski. Uh, first, I'd like to say 
many people know me, if I had 30 years in policing and I retired as the chief of police, that there is a need in these off-duty jobs to set the parameters. And you have to be fair to all people. I know Yvonne came up here and she mentioned there are situations where people right now, homeowners might have minor work done by the house, and they have to pay for an off-duty cop. Part of this ordinance is to allow those people to have a voice and to ask and go to the director and the intake manager to talk about whether they really need an officer present at that time. Also that I know was mentioned about one hour, four hours, the vast majority of the off-duty jobs are through construction companies and utilities. Almost all of them are going to be over four hours and more. You're going to find very few of them that are under that. It may apply in a particular situation where you have a, uh, a person who does some sort of construction work, a small-time person who has a delivery of some material that may take one or two hours. The big-time people are out there. There are many hours of employment. In fact, going forward from what I see with this current administration, there's a lot of development going on, particularly up in the General Square area. There's millions of dollars out there for off-duty jobs. There's a, there's the, the police officers in this uh, city are going to be very happy with the way things are going. The current administrative costs now, for the most part, are being assumed by the taxpayers because under the current system, there's two people, two officers in each district, if I'm correct, who are in charge of dealing with the off-duty jobs. So the taxpayers are paying their salary for what they're doing. Under this ordinance, the salary of the intake manager will be paid through the administrative fees that the utility companies and the construction companies are paying, not the taxpayers. Nothing Plus, more. the idea that coming from an administrative point of view and dealing with the federal government and the state government, they'll tell you over and over again that no sworn officer should be in a position that can be served by a civilian. So by putting sworn officers there, we're sort of sanctioning and saying we don't need them. Well, we do need them. We need them out on the street to help the other officers out. So having said that, I vote aye. Well said. Thank you. Council Person Ramchal? Aye. Council Person Bargiano? I just want to say something. Thank God for off-duty work because it puts 150 uniformed cops into the street every day. And it's great when there's a crime in the neighborhood and things happen, they're there. That's 150 extra police officers a day on the street. Aye. Councilperson Yun. Yes, uh, I'm not still happy with our compensation for police officers. They increased like a 17%. But overall, there was some great improvement to exist this new ordinance, so I say aye. Oh, I'm sorry. Councilperson Osborne. This ordinance is absolutely wonderful for the homeowners in Jersey City. So no longer, if you need to fix a por portion of your sidewalk, you're going to have to hire someone for four hours to come out. And, and so with that, um, I'm thankful um, that I put this together and vote aye. Councilperson Coleman. I'm with Candace also. That's the part of this ordinance that really excited me. No longer are, is a homeowner going to have to pay for four hours if their job only calls for an hour. It's going to be one hour that they get paid for, and that is the main reason that, oh, plus there are going to be more offices on the street. So that's, that's the reason I vote aye. Councilperson Rivera? I vote aye. Councilperson Waterman? Aye. Council President? Aye. We have a 9 0 vote for the final adoption of City Ordinance 13141, item 4H on the agenda. Council members, we're to our last second reading ordinance. We are not conducting a public hearing on it. We're going right to the defeat of this ordinance. It's Ordinance 13142, an ordinance authorizing an amended and restated financial agreement for 272 Grove Street Urban Renewal, LLC, which was approved by City Ordinance 07052, converting from a condominium project to a market rate residential rental project. 
3A was introduced earlier in the meeting, so that is the functional replacement of this ordinance. So could I get your nay votes, starting with you, Councilperson Gajewski? Nay. Cha. Nay. Bajano? Nay. Yun? Nay. Osborne? Nay. Coleman? Nay. Rivera? Waterman? Nay. Council President? Nay. Hey, Mr. Clerk, the, can I just add in for the record that uh, a lot of the council members worked hard on this matter, but I, I do want to especially thank uh, Councilwoman Osborne, who is uh, the ward leader for this ward, and who continued to work hard with uh, with all of us up at the Corporation Council Office and the developers and the council to uh, to get a resolution to this matter. Thanks. It was, it was defeated zero to nine. No votes in the affirmative. All nine against. Give me a blink, <coughs> council members. Okay, council members, that's it for the uh, second reading ordinance. We are to the speaker's list. Jamie Vasquez, speaker's list. Jamie Vasquez present. Jamie. Felices Navidades. Thank you, good evening. You know, the one thing that I lost in the hurricane was the door that I had to my office for 12 years. And on that door was a bumper sticker that said, Free Nelson Mandela. The city council and the mayor had agreed not to do any business with companies that had business in, in, um, in South Africa. And we, did, we did it just before or just after the state of New Jersey did the same thing. With all due respect, don't let things don't just vote on things in front of you. There's a problem in Washington, and if, if they have any more financial problems, senior citizens, disabled, veterans, those are the people that are going to hurt the most. Earlier this year, I met with then Councilman Fulop. We discussed the coming campaign, and we agreed that I would work for his election as mayor. After which, on July 1st, I would become an, quote, aide to the mayor, unquote. Well, July came and went. I was able to have a brief meeting with the chief of staff. After that meeting, I became a persona non grata in the mayor's office. I was never able to speak to him again. I never received the courtesy of a return call. Nonetheless, July 1st came and went. So did August, September, and October. Early in October, I ran into the, meeting, in, ran into the mayor's city hall. I asked him about my situation. He said that he hadn't taken any action on my case because he heard that I was, quote, bad-mouthing him, unquote, around town. I was taken aback. When I asked him who said this, his response was, everybody. Everybody? Most of the people I spoke with said that the mayor was using this as an excuse not to hire me. Why didn't he call me as soon as he received the first statements? Financially, I have been destroyed. Plans to relocate to Orlando, Florida with my sons and grandchildren have been canceled. The mayor can consider the rest of my family that his actions have impacted as collateral damage. This has been a sad holidays for my family, and there won't be a Merry Christmas either. But they say that God works in strange ways. Mr. Phillip has hired Healy people who worked against him and me. He placed these people in high positions within his administration. He allowed these people to feed him information that was false, a clear case of Catch-22. Now, Catch-22 is you get screwed if you do it, and you get screwed if you don't. This information was hearsay and innuendo, was used by the mayor against me after the election. During the campaign, I spoke to almost every person I know and urged them to vote for Mr. Fuller, for mayor. Now they're asking what happened to my position within the administration. I am greatly disappointed at the type of mayor Mr. Phillip has turned out to be. 
In my case, he has been disrespectful, vindictive, dismissing and callous, just to name a few. Now, I know he hasn't treated the great majority of the people this way. I'm just saying that this is the way he treated me. He made a decision based on his in the window regarding having worked campaigns for presidential, from the presidential level to the local levels. I know something about political campaigns. I've, been, I've even flown on Air Force One with the President of the United States. Mr. Fuller, his upper staff, and some of his supporters don't know me. They don't know part of our history. They don't know how we got here from there. I have worked very hard for the people of Jersey City my entire adult life. I didn't take the money and run like so many others have. And I would not allow anybody, especially the mayor, to treat my person or character with impunity. Mr. Fulop has a long way to go if he thinks this kind of action and attitude will enhance his chances of becoming governor or anything else. Mr. Fulop should be the mayor first. Take care of the people first, not your political and financial friends. Finally, why did the mayor eliminate the Office of Veterans Affairs? The public wants to know. Many people have asked me about that. The people who allowed this to happen City Council, without debate, should be ashamed. With all of the efforts to help our wounded and disabled veterans across the political and economic spectrum, now is not the time to eliminate these services for our veterans. Why did Mr. Phillips, supposedly a veteran from the Iraq War, abolish the Office of Georgia City Veterans Affairs? Thank you very much. Burn Thank you, Mr. Huh? Laverne, Washington. Laverne present? Yes, she is. Okay. The air condition on my leg with my leg hurting. Huh, Steve? Huh? Why put that air on my leg? Got me aching. Good evening, Council. Good evening. I was here a few weeks back, and I told you about my children in my community. I haven't heard from you, Councilwoman. You know, it's a shame because my car got broke and I had to take them children in my neighbor's car up to Bethune Cookman Saturday before last, and then I had to get another neighbor car to pick them up. Then last Saturday, I was supposed to be in Atlanta, my system will pass, but I didn't go. I got my car out the shop. I had to take the kids up there last Saturday. But you know, I won't be here Saturday at the next, my parents are going to Atlanta to be with my grandkids. But it's shame on this city when our children are continuing to be gunned down, to be bullied, and you want to take the time to help them. I told you, I don't have no children here. Blood. But the children of this city are my children. And for me, at 65, to take my time and my energy and my little change, that I got to help these children here, a city with so much money, and got a recreation van that we've been using, all of a sudden, I get a phone call from Gary Nye that we can't use the city van say, for something else, that I should call the county and get a county bus to bring kids from the junction up to the center. But when the kids needed to go down from the, from the, from the, from the center, to a photo op down at the gym on Division Street was no problem. These are all our kids. I'm tired of losing kids to the jailhouse and to the graveyard. And you guys got elected, you know our city officials, and this is the best that we can do? They tell me that I can't use it because it's for something else? A recreation man? Sadly, Piers, I got a break. Jerry Walker had an ice skating event, and he took half of my kids with him on his trip. I got Unique up on Ocean Avenue, who I bring these kids to. He doesn't have a van. We, we, we hustle rides for these kids. We shouldn't have to do that. These are Jersey City kids. These are kids that grandmothers and great-grandmothers are raising. And, and we talk about crime? I'm trying to stop crime, and I can't get help from the city to stop the crime in this city? There's something wrong with that. Something's wrong with that. And here you got all these people come down here tonight 
fighting for their jobs and fighting for contracts with the medical center. Well, I don't care who get the contract because I'm tired of my children being picked up by EMT with gunshot wounds, stab wounds, getting beat with back. And here we can't help to do nothing for them. I just gave out 200 coats. I just asked councilman Rivera the night. I got a family, a grandmother with 10 kids still need coats. I asked them to help me out. I don't go around asking nobody to help me. I do the best I could. I give these kids brand new coats, brand new book bags every year for 10 years. I don't have to do this. I do it because I love my city and I care about these kids. Just trying to say one at a time. But what are you guys doing to help me? Nothing. Nothing. And then we talk about crime. You know, come on, you got, we got to do better. This ain't about Laverne, election over. Mendel spent 27 years in jail. And when he came out, he forgot the people that put him there. And that's why he lived to be 95 years old. Because he, he, he put that stuff aside. Election's over. You're not doing nothing for me. You're doing it for the benefit of the city. For the people. Them kids came up here tonight with a science project. I did the wet building. We did the same thing to the roof of that building up there on Oakland. It's a green building. 40 units. I didn't benefit from that. The people in this community. The, the Fred Martin building. 40 more units. The people in this community. Stop playing games with people lives. It ain't about being a politician. Be better than that. Put yesterday behind you. Look forward. We got seniors need housing. We need help in this. We need to communicate. This ain't no time to play games and play politics with people lives. Come on, do better. Um, Laverne, Laverne, come back. I'd like to say something to you. I asked you to please email me those things. I don't have no email. But, I'll use well, well, let me tell you why. This is what I get, and, and what I'm asking for is a source document, or come here, or do something. You didn't tell to me get, that you said you were going to me. I, I gave you my card and told you to send me an email or I'll set up, a, email. Or set up an appointment with me. Every Thursday, I'm here all day to okay. just, well, we'll I need you no to come to me so that I will know I no what problem. it is. I, I, I need you to come and say, Council No, let me do this, the vacuum, because two times, this is my last time coming here, nothing. I done came here and had to walk them steps. I got two knees, bone rubbing bone. And my, my therapy, I'm in therapy now. He gets mad because I don't use my cane. I sit there tonight and got stiff at the door when they turn hey, the heel on. Laverne, if we can yeah. maybe take this I need you to communicate yeah, with conversation so offline. And when there's a problem. There are other people waiting she to speak. Me, I'm sorry. I'm, and I'm asking for councilwoman yeah, to take the conversation me. offline. Okay, next speaker, Hussein Lucas. Probably hurt that name a little bit. Not present. Janice Douglas. Good evening. Good evening. Um, a couple of months ago, I started getting storm water backing up into my basement. Um, actually, what those kids said here tonight, I had no idea they were going to be here, but I, they like said it all for me. There's definitely problems within the city. Um, there was a water main break, there was a collapsed sewer, and now I have a broken sewer line. Uh, it's all connected. But the MUA is saying that it's my responsibility to fix the sewer line. Um, they gave me several excuses what happened with the sewer. They told me first it was a water main break. They said you, them and United Water go back and forth seeing who's going to pay for it. Um, then they came back and said, no, it wasn't a water main break. They said you have a bluestone lodged in your pipe. Then they said, no, it's not that. You're on a common sewer line, and your neighbors are going to have to pay for it. Then they, when I told them, that's ridiculous. They're not going to pay for my problem. They said, well, it could be the fire truck, uh, the firehouse across the street. With all those heavy fire trucks, it rattled the connection loose. Because it's basically just the connection that popped off after the collapsed sewer fell down and broke the main, or whatever. Then 
they said, no, it's not that. Uh, it's the rats that ate your connection. They like clay pipes. And they showed me a picture of rats in the truck. And I was like, my mouth dropped open. And what I want to say to them is, would they look a man in the eye and tell a man that rats ate their clay pipes? Because I feel like I was discriminated against at that point. I've been, they used scare tactics on me, telling me that they had uh, the video all wrapped up to go to court. I said, court, who mentioned anything about court? They've been using intimidation, scare tactics, excuse after excuse after excuse, and they are not fixing my sewage system. Um, I went in front of, I was, told, I was given the runaround. This has been going on the whole year, and it's a multifamily dwelling. Um, I was told to go in front of the Board of Commissioners that they have the authority to overrule the MUA in situations like that. So I went in front of the Board of Commissioners the night before Thanksgiving, when I should have been home cooking my, preparing my meals, but I was out there in the cold weather and I was there. And there were some women on the board, and I was happy to see that. And when I told them my story, their mouths dropped open and they looked at each other. And I knew they felt the pain that I was going through. Um, and I was waiting for an answer from them, and I never got one from the board. Uh, I just, it just never materialized. I had no, there was no answer from the board of commissioners at all. They said it was, was illegal. And I'm saying, why would it be illegal? I didn't do anything illegal. So they said, well, that's the, the process that it takes. And I waited day after day as the sewage built up and built up in my basement. And I've been there all year pumping it out the window. And they knew this because I called them back in February. That's when it all started. Um, and they knew that this raw sewage has been being pumped out my window, which is a clear violation. They never said anything about that. Um, th when I first called them to tell them that I have storm water backing up in my basement, they said, that's not our problem, that's yours. So I didn't know any better, so I said, okay, so I called a plumber. Um, the plumber, I called actually plumber after plumber after plumber. They all ripped me off. I spent $10,000. I had my pipes snaked. I had them uh, high power jetted. I had them cameraed three and four times of all of that. I had them replaced. They told me I had a broken pipe. I had excavation. I had them replaced. I had the trap dug up. I had the trap raised. I had major work done, and it was still happening. So I called up the city again, and I have a whole, I have my phone records of all the times that I've called them. And I said, look, I said, I did all I can do. I can't do anymore. I said, I spent $10,000, I did all this work, all these plumbers are telling me it's the city, you have to call the city. I said, I'm giving you guys a chance. I'm not a rat. I don't want to be a rat. But if you guys don't come up here and fix this problem, I am going to call the State Department of Health because this is a health issue. I said, this is a multifamily dwelling and there's raw sewage backing up in the basement. The next day they came up and they said, um, they said, okay, you have a collapsed sewer. Never apologized for all the uh, suffering I went through, for all the expense I went through. They said, we're going to fix the, uh, we're going to rebuild the manhole. We're going to uh, fix, sleeve the cracked pipes. We're going to jet it out, clean, first clean out all the debris, and jet it out. So they did some of that, but not all of it. Um, it took them two days to remove all of the cracked pipes that were right in front of my house in the main. It took them two days to remove truckload after truckload after truckload. Cracked pipes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Excuse me? You have to sum up. Five, you have five minutes. Yeah, I, I don't think that was five minutes. I mean, for really? I thought well, other people minutes. were going longer. Okay, so the bottom you, line is they Dennis, finally... What is your address? It's 136 South Street. Do you know favor, David? Do me a favor, she spent already $10,000, and the JCM, the way they work, unacceptable. It's a disgrace. Why taxpayer go around 
Do me a favor. Can't you come through the JCM? Would you help her? Straightforward. Actually, Councilman, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to her after. Yes, please. It okay. is really disgusting. It, it did go to legal, and it had no right to be legal. I didn't do anything illegal. Now, what I want to say is these people, there's 27 residents in the house. They're going to be asked to move for Christmas because it's building up. The pipes are freezing. I can't eject it anymore. Okay. I'm just going to give you my card. If you just want to email me offline, we will uh, follow up. This what is, is your Annie. name? My name is Jeremy Farrow. Yeah, you're the one you have. Uh, you gave me the letter. I yeah, got the letter from you. It went around in the complete yeah, circle. Just email me offline. This is a matter for the MUA, but I'll help you facilitate that. Okay? Okay. Well, Jeremy, I'm going to be calling the state. I'm, not, I'm calling the state. I'm not hearing any more nonsense. The has a problem, too. So, <laughs> I'm calling the State Department of Health, the Department of Community Affairs, the EPA. I'm calling Mr. them all. Dennis, Dennis, do me a favor. Jeremy I gave promised us that he's going to take care of it. No, it's Please. in here. I got a letter from him, and it says no. They're not fixing it for me. It's no, from no. him. That was then. You know, he understands the issue now more he clearly. It then too, that he will. Okay, he, he, I'd he. like to please give each council uh, person uh, letters and stuff. I have receipts. I have pictures. If you give it to the clerk, he'll distribute it to the council. If you give it to the Jersey City. I live and breathe Jersey City. I never would do anything. I don't Mr. want to have to sue. I don't want to do anything like that. You guys have Thank you. Thank you. Page. Josephine Page. William Doherty. Uh, William Doherty. Uh, Robert, I guess. Uh, 3060 Kennedy Boulevard. Now, uh, there's a letter to uh, uh, Robert Byrne and some others, uh, certified mail. I'm requesting uh, incident reports of any and all robberies, burglaries, etc. to Grandview for the years 2012-2013. These are police reports. However, I've been advised that while this is a police matter, nevertheless, I must make this request for your office. As you know, the land of Lavalle is publicly estated at 24-7 security guard orders is not being forced at the Grandview. Grandview landlord has been disseminating disinformation concerning this matter to the tenants. Waivers, backroom deals, loopholes, smoke screens have been exploited by this landlord in the past since 1985 when the landlord received his exemption. 24-7 security guard code. Tenants United is trying to determine whether taxpayer monies are being used to fund the Grandview landlord's exemption. 50-year tax abatement was a private backroom deal between the Grandview landlord and the city. In 1967, a recent Jersey General article pointed the fact Steve Forbes is now auditing the books of landlords who receive such abatements, and logic would dictate dictate that the Grandview landlord would be among the first to receive such auditing. But your landlord is private property, it's for profit. Small group of investors making a ton of money here at the Grandview. To now the state affairs has gone on question. Now, it's been my understanding Robert Kalkowski has set, sent notices to all the uh, landlords that are in noncompliance. And I was wondering uh, uh, if, if there's a time frame, like a window, like of two months, you know, they have to submit if they want. Uh, whatever exemptions, but I don't see how you can get exemptions uh, on just anything. Is it a questionnaire or form? Is there a window? We have to have this information back in a, a couple of months. And uh, I don't understand, but if Robert Kabakowski could just a explain what the status, because he has told me on the phone. Are you, are you done, Mr. Doherty? Okay. Okay. Uh Mr. Kakalowski. Okay. You're uh, finished, Mr. Doherty? Yeah, I, I, okay. I'm finished. I, I was just wondering if uh, the, the council president would ask Robert Kakalowski. Right. He'll, he'll explain. All okay. right. Um, the police department has conducted an audit by each of the four districts in the city, identified every unit, every building that is 100 units or more, looked at the security situation, identified which are not in compliance. They have provided that report to me. I have now asked the public safety director to issue or send out notices to those that are in violation, and that this is going to begin the process that um, Mr. Doherty's been speaking about for quite right. some time. So, hope, you know, 
we because it hasn't been enforced, right. everything's starting new. The, the letter, you know, the time frame. So I can't answer everything Mr. Authority is asking, but we have begun the process. They're, they're moving very expeditiously. I think uh, the business administrator, the, de the Department of Public Safety, and all the other agencies are, are working um, very efficiently to to address this. Uh, uh, I'm I sorry, just want to, Mr. Dory, if I may. Sure. I just want to take take uh, contention with. You, you've now said twice in back-to-back -back meetings that I've stated something, just for the record, just well, for, for fairly clearly. Well, you follow through. If, yes. I, if I may finish, sir? Yes, go ahead. Um, you said that I publicly stated that 24-7 security ordinance is not being enforced. At Grandview, it's in fact has never been enforced, um, not just at Grandview, but at any apartment or building complex that that uh, is qual qualifies for That's right. um, a, application of the ordinance. Okay. So. Um, Give it some, ask for your patience. They're moving through very expeditiously and working with you. And I know that you spoke with the, the BA about this and they're working with you to try to get it done, okay? Thank you very much, Council you. President. Uh, yeah, I use the mic, uh, Richard, can you? Hold on. You had a fire on the 16th floor there? Uh, we had a fire on the 16th floor. The fireman couldn't get in because there's no security guard at the door. Nobody let him in. Yeah, how yeah, was, was it totally, I understand it was totally, uh, the kitchen and everything was destroyed? Exactly, exactly. And uh, that's one of the incidents. Firemen can't get in, uh, police can't get in. There's no security guard at the door. Thank you. Yvonne Bolser. She lives in the uh, first of all, before I talk about the Richard City Medical Ambulance, I want to say thank you for having an, a resolution honoring uh, Dr. Father, Dr. Felix, um, wonderful person. I know him personally. he had been part of Resurrection Parish, St. Peter's, and it's nice to see somebody like him um, get an, uh, to be recognized from Jersey City. I'm quite sure he'll go back to Africa, talk nicely about us um, when he returns. Um, wonderful person. Um, I also see that you have a resolution about utilities, which I spoke about earlier, and how they are all over the city. I hope something can be done to tighten them up, because it is a problem, especially when you have issues of fires, so these things do fall down. So I want to thank you for that. I should, Yvonne, if I could just quickly speak, we're actually withdrawing it tonight. You just, are, huh? Just to fix some of the language, so some of the technical language around it. Um, and but it'll, it'll be out there for the next one and we're... Okay, thank you for telling there. me that. Okay, okay uh, and uh, tomorrow also is, this, tomorrow the city is having its tax lien sale, which means people who do not have an abatement because they couldn't afford to pay their taxes, the city's going to sell them. It's the reason why I come here all the time. When the Jersey Journal had this in the paper, I think the fifth of this month, it was 16 pages, but it was the long version. It really is 32 if you fold it in half. So we have a lot of our citizens who can't afford their water and taxes, and yet we hand out tax abatements like it's candy. It's really pathetic. Um, I also want to, um, just for a minute, we have an agenda here that has probably over 100 items. Um, very briefly, Jason Berg is an American citizen. We have too many things on the agenda. He has the legal status to speak here. I may not agree what he talks about all the time, but he's an American citizen. My relatives, I know going back to World War I fought for this country to have that freedom of speech. So I necessarily do not agree with that. Um, I think we should perhaps reduce what's on the agenda because you will always have, quote, a Jason Burson, Jason Berg in our society. It may not be called Jason Berg, it will be called something else. I myself um, just pick and choose what I want to speak about. Because when you, you eliminate his freedom of speech, the next thing I know you'll be eliminating my freedom of speech. And that is something I will not tolerate. Now, the other thing I want to say is on Jersey City Medical at the ambulance, thank you for postponing it. It is being shoved down the throat of Jersey City residents. I'm at the age right now where I might need a professional and was come to my house for myself or my husband or anyone else in, the, in my building. And I want the person who's the best, not the person who saves the most money. I want the person that scores A+. Plus. 
Not the person who the scores may be an okay. Because Jersey City is a unique city. You really have to know the streets. Journal Square is weird in terms of how it is laid out. It really is. Downtown is, is more, is easier. The height is easier. Some parts of the city you really can't figure out too well. The streets, it just goes into, I want somebody that I've been using, you know. I would say, actually, the boss has been here in the city for 140 years, so we, and they've been, they've been here probably for 130 years, so we kind of started together in terms of the city, because the people who have been here a long time, I have nothing against the McCabe, but I think the McCabe, but I think we should stick with what we have. I think there should be a public hearing on this. This is very critical. This is very crucial. And instead of just having to postpone for the, the next 30 days, bring this out, have public hearings, go to certain schools and have a public hearing, and make it open. It's not open enough. It's being forced down our throats. And I don't like. And I want to also say thank you to the council president because today's hearing is not on Christmas. Because the last time I was talking a budget hearing, we had that on Holy Thursday. And I want to thank you very much. I can now come here because, you know, next week is Christmas. I don't have to worry about coming to a council meeting on Christmas Day. So thank you very much for that, Mr. Bird. Thank you very much, too. <laughs> thank you very much and have a Merry Christmas. I'll give all credit to, to the city clerk. <laughs> no, we had a budget hearing on Holy Thursday, which kind of annoyed me a bit. Uh, it was a holy day of obligation for me. I know. It's, Thank you. Your time is up. Thank you. All, All right, Barna. Yvonne. Paul Barna. No? I left. Paula Nervoso. She was here earlier. Maria Darby. Joseph W. Kranick. Mr. Kranick. Good evening. My name is Joseph W. Kranick, and I rise as the president of the Uniform Firefighters Association of Jersey City. And on behalf of all the firefighters, I'd like to wish you and your loved ones and everybody in the audience and throughout the city a very happy and holiday Christmas season. So I'm not Scrooge. I'm not coming here to be a Scrooge, so, uh, even though my daughter thinks I might be. Now, let me just start from the, the beginning of my time. I have served as the president of our union for 37 consecutive years, the end of this year. I've supported the Jersey City Medical Center all along. We supported them in Hackensack about 20 some odd years ago when they became a trauma center. This isn't about the Jersey City Medical Center when you walk in the threshold of their doors. It's an excellent trauma center. It's an excellent place. And whether it's McCabe, Jersey City Medical Center, or Ambucar, or anybody, if I'm at the scene, that person, that firefighter, is going to be transported to the Jersey City Medical Center. It's one of the premier hospitals in the state of New Jersey. This isn't about that. This is about history. I was born and raised downtown. A Jersey City police officer drove the ambulance when I was a kid, and an impeccable nurse came out of the car, out of the ambulance, with her bonnet on, and attended to people. Goes a long way with history. The ads say they got a 130-year history. I'm 68. I know probably about maybe a good 61 of the years. Because, you know, seven years old, you don't know too much. But I do remember standing in front of PS 37 going up to the gym when St. Francis Hospital was right across the street. And they had an they had an emergency room there, and the ambulances used to go down there. So I'm an old bastard, and I understand where we're coming from. I understand in 1993, when firefighter Carlos Negrin died on Palisade Avenue, when Jersey City Medical Center in 1993, it's a long time ago. Why are you bringing that up, Joe? They only had one defibrillator. Why didn't all the ambulances have a defibrillator? And we transported that firefighter to the Saint, uh, to Christ Hospital. I went along with that firefighter. And the doctor looked at me while he was on a gurney. Try one more time as they stuck a six inch needle into his heart. If you think it's easy and I get frustrated 
by the lack of sometimes people understanding what firefighters do every day and police officers do and the EMS here. They might not like what I say, but this is about power. This is about a contract. Here's what the Jersey City Medical Center said in a letter. And I thought an RFP, because I sat right there with Dominic Puglisi when they opened the bid here and they wanted to bring the bid into Mayor Schindler's office. Time out, Corporation Council. They got to open the bid here. Now, this bid was open, I don't know where, and it was amended three or four times. But let me give you a letter that they sent. And I like when, when people say they have a readiness plan. This is a readiness plan, and they didn't share it with anybody because there's probably some confidentiality in here. But I won't read the confidentiality of how many, you know, cars they want to put on to do a first responder program. Here's what they quote in this letter dated the 12th of December, 2013. Then I, I just quote, it's first page, you can get a copy of it. The Jersey City Medical Center EMS Department put in place starting in 2006 the department has set a new standards for life-saving quality care and significant reductions in response times. Great. Sounds good. I have one minute, but let me finish because it's very important. Since 2006, the medical center was paid $26,594,798.12. Well, thank you, medical center, for waking up and saying the people of Jersey City shouldn't have to pay your damn thing. Because you're getting paid when you transport somebody. Now, I know it's in litigation, whatever McCabe says, whatever the Jersey City Medical Center says. But let me just say that when you pay somebody $26 million, and I was born downtown Jersey City, you ain't going to BS me. All right? But when now all of a sudden somebody comes in and says, we're not going to pay you a dime. We don't want nothing from you any longer. Well, no shit. You just supplied them with ambulances over the last eight years. You did everything you can. And then for the first time, you got a vendor coming in saying, we're going to pay you $2.6 million. I don't get it. I don't know how two places could be that far apart. But I'm going to listen to all the arguments, even if it takes till 2 o'clock in the morning. I'll read all the, all, all the, uh, the paraphernalia that I can get. But remember, it's a sacred trust. When the Jersey City Fire Department first responders go and listen to the radio right there, there was probably 20 of them since 4 o'clock. And somebody's going to tell me they're going to put these 2005 and 2006 rigs on the road with one person in and do the job. Don't cast dispersions upon the firefighters, neither McCabe or the JC Medical Center, because I can bring 400 people here too. That don't impress me. They got a leader in me. They need one voice, mine. I'll listen to the rest of the people. Dean Nowak. Dean Nowak's not here. Michael Alessi. Josephine Spina. John Severowski. Good evening. Uh, Joe's a tough guy to follow. I'm going to be very simple and brief. Uh, I think I, I've reached out to all of you prior to the caucus meeting, and I had some reservations about what was happening. Uh, after the caucus meeting, some things became very evident. Okay, and, I, and I'm just going to go over a couple of things that I pointed out to uh, someone after that caucus meeting, uh, when they asked me my opinion of what I thought went on at the caucus, I said it was very interesting dialogue between the two vendors, the attorneys, the CEOs, and Michael, Candace, Diane, and Rich. Uh, a lot of things were said there, and, and you actually learn a lot more things at the caucus than you do here, I think. You, you, you find out what's going on. Uh, my thoughts and questions after the caucus, I had a, a, an issue with the uh, five-member evaluation committee and a three-member non-voting advisory group. No one with a true medical background was on either of those groups. And to me, this doesn't make sense. How do you evaluate a medical contract so important 
to the taxpayers, residents of Jersey City, as well as the people who commute in here and work here every day, the thousands of people coming in. How do you do that without having someone on that committee? As to the comment that the last time the EMS contract was evaluated five years ago, that there were no evaluators on that evaluation committee with a medical background, it only continues to point out that the errors of the past administration, the administration that was voted out of office because of some of those decisions. Another question that went unanswered as far as I was concerned was, was the criteria defined in writing as to how each evaluator was to score each area of the evaluation to determine the evaluation results? To me, that's probably the most important thing on something like this. Was the criteria in writing and understood by everyone, including the council members, prior to the RFP going out? You don't put those things together after the RFP goes out. And you guys approved that going out, but I would have hoped you would have seen it and understood what the scoring mechanisms were going to be. Um, I just think that in, in Finally, yesterday, I did get a chance to look at the evaluation process, and, and I assume you have all looked at it. I just think that too much has gone into the financial part of this process. I, I look at each of the people's throwing out of this scoring mechanism, and it seems like this was mostly decided on a financial decision. That, in fact, that's where most of the points were pulled together for three people to vote in favor of one vendor over the other. Yet, if you look at the, and I think I pointed this out to you is when I realized it on um, Monday afternoon, that if you add up the scores, the, the actual points, the one vendor had 1,201 in the medical center, and McCabe had 1,191. So actually total points, medical center scored more. Should that be taken into consideration when you look at this? Uh, I, I think the taxpayers of Jersey City do feel that they're overtaxed, but I don't think we want to cut corners and plug budget numbers when we put people at risk. This is probably one of the most important contracts you're going to do. I think you need to sit down with the committee. I think you need to talk to your constituents, see what their feelings are. I haven't formed an opinion of who does a better service or not. I've looked at these uh, results, and it looks like the medical center scored higher in everything other than the financial end of it. I don't know whether that will be your final decision, but I think you guys should be in the driver's seat and not this committee that doesn't have anyone with a medical background on it. No one up there has a medical background either, but you can talk to people. Even the, the advisors to this committee, the three advisors that were non-voting, no one there has a medical background. They have police, fire background, but not a medical background. So I think you really need to look at that a little closer. Thank Brother you. Brother John, how would you feel, how, how would you like to be sitting up here and on Friday morning get a Jersey Journal and find out that a decision was made, and I don't think one of us here knew about it, and I'm going to tell you something else. I called up a week, a little over a week ago and asked the top official in this administration if there was a decision made, because I got a call, there was, and I was told no. And I think it's a slap in the face to this council. If that's what well, happened, then, let, me, let me speak to that. So, not, not, not that they not that made a decision with regard to this, but with regard to whether this council knew or not, I mean, we, we have the resolution approving the concession um, uh, process to, to go out to bid. Um, and then subsequently after that, I, don't, I think every council member probably received uh, probably a month ago, about 5,000 letters um, in boxes 
about this, this contract. Um, and – Talking about the decision, not the contract. Yeah, about the decision that was going to be pending. That's the contract, the awarding of the contract, correct? So, um, everybody received that. I know when I received that, I thought to myself, you know what, this is pretty important to the people of Jersey City. So I started to ask the business administrator almost on a daily basis, where do we stand with the, in the process right now? And I guess it's, it's incumbent upon each council person to do their own due diligence and their own research into the process um, in order to, to be able to make a decision. Rolando's so, decision was made in the paper without notifying us and telling us. And I said I called up and I was told there was no decision made. Well, identify your source if you're going to, instead of making anonymous accusations that somebody told you that uh, they didn't know any information. Muhammad, and I asked him, and I was, he called me back and told me. Well, then you should bring Muhammad before the council and, yeah, and uh, call him, take him to account is, about that. I don't want to pick up a Jersey Journal, find out a major decision has been made without us knowing about it, without us seeing the paperwork, and without us seeing what's going on. I think it's an <laughs> Sorry, Rolando, but... It's wrong. I'm going to call the next speaker, John Deduces. Pat Amelia. Carlos Negron. Joe Scott. Hi, I'm Joe Scott, the President and CEO of Jersey City Medical Center. I'm also a Jersey City resident, live at 45 Park Lane South. And so I have a vested interest in Jersey City, obviously. I've lived here for all the time I've worked at the Medical Center for the past six years. Um, you know, I, I know we're going to have an opportunity to discuss this again, and we had a good discussion, I think, on, uh, at the caucus meeting, where I think a lot of the issues came to light. Uh, I am appreciative of the administration taking a step back this is a very, very important issue for our city. And so I think that's the right decision. I want to tell you that um, there were a lot of people who wanted to come here tonight. I asked them not to come because I knew it was going to be tabled. Um, and so there is a lot of support for this. There were 13,000 signatures delivered to each and every one of you from people who are really concerned about this. So I appreciate all of you taking a step back. I am dedicated to our city dedicated to providing the highest level of care for our, our patients. Um, and when you need us, the medical center will always be there as the only not-for-profit. So thank you. Ed Harward here. Lynn Chundler. Angel Lazo. Riaz Wahid. Good evening. Um, before I start, uh, I want to let Rolando know that the people left because they were busted in. You have the power to change the order of the business. If you want them to hear, you can put them first to speak. Now, I want to thank Rolando and Chico and uh, Rivera, uh, councilman, for helping us to cook meals on Thanksgiving Day. And you guys gave turkey and you gave water for us. Um, now, getting back to the ambulance. Um, you, you all know the issues now. I have no issue. You, ha you have to take the $2.6 million legally, not as a kickback. It's against the law. It's, it's illegal money. Now, do it in the right way. What did they do in Newark? 2012, UMDNJ got $4.35 million. They went back. They did a study of running that under fire department and charging a fee. This is a gold mine. You can make more money than $2.6 million. How did you come to $2.6 million? $10 a head. Is that all you are worth? This is ridiculous. You can make more money than that if you do it in the right way. Now, one of the very important parameters, not considering the RFP, is number of insurance companies, what they accept. It is not considered at all as a parameter. Why? Eight not union, local unions, and Blue Cross Blue Shield, not for profits, they accepted. JCMC accepted. And the not for the for profit hospitals are solvent today because they changed the business model 
of restricting the insurances and treating rest of us out of network. That's why they are solvent today. That's why they are called for profit. You should go back and look into that. Now, there's also here issue of the money given to team flop. This is a very important issue. The lobbyists paid you $7,500, $2,500 for a joint committee of yours. Then there is a name. They, then there is then there is a name, Mekab. That particular name, I don't know. Somebody from a remote place gave ten thousand four hundred dollars. Who is that person? First time contributed to joint committee, and you have to let us know who this person is. When you ask the questions, you are silent. Why? But you have taken money. Who is this person? Who is working for Merck, a pharma company? A middle level manager, how can he afford ten thousand four hundred dollars? For what purpose he has given the money to you? For good governance, I'll take it. But why? You have to clarify this thing to us, which you don't. Now, all you have remember that apples can fall only so far from the tree. In this day and age, it's easy to track the money back, and do not put yourself into the situation. Now, the review committee. As I said, it's not fair. It, there's no diversity in that. If you look at the uh, acting BA, he gave for a cost proposal, same score for the um, past performance and references, same score. How is it possible? Has Mekay ever serviced 250,000 residents? How is it possible? What is fairness? He got kicked out from Secaucus Town for not keeping two vehicles there. 2012. Was that mentioned in the reference? Did he do due diligence? I don't think so. These things are important for us. Now, all I'm asking you is consider all this. Say, consider all these things. Go back to the drawing table and do good for the residents. Forget about these two people. Do good for what is good for us. I, I, I wish you, you know, like a very happy, you know, uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And I wish you good luck for next year. Thank you very much. Christopher Dezina, Rashawn Williams, Ricardo Torres. Esther Wintner. Might ask anybody on the speakers list. We have some empty spots in the on deck circle up here. Hello, Esther. Hello, Mr. Byrne. Um, Merry Christmas. First, we'd like to thank uh, Councilman. Bogiano and the Jersey Journal, Augie Torres, for uh, helping to get a Christmas tree in Journal Square. Thank you very much for that. <clears throat> I would like to speak uh, regarding the ambulatory service contract. What I think one of the things that the uh, review committee and the decision process did not take into account was a bigger picture. Ambulance service is like a lifeline financially to hospitals. The, uh, the ambulance contract in the big picture is a small component of what really is the big money that people are looking for, and that's the health services that are provided at the point of service. <clears throat> CarePoint runs the most expensive hospital in the country, Bayonne Hospital. And if this contract were to be, if Medical Center loses this contract, it also puts them in a very bad position in terms of their finances because if they can't sustain themselves, if they have to downsize, sell out, go bankrupt, and we are left with CarePoint, uh, it leaves us without very many options. It leaves us with a company that runs one of the most expensive hospitals in this country. In addition to the fact that they don't take all insurances, such as Aetna 
And I understand, based on a letter today that I read, or one of the emails, even some of the insurances, the Blue Cross or something, from many of the city employees. So I think you need to take a look at that, because it's kind of short-sighted to say we're going to save $2.6 million, so each resident saves $10, but um, if they're hit with an onerous medical bill and they're forced to sell their home or go bankrupt, either themselves or their families, everyone can take comfort in the fact that the Jersey City budget saved $2 million. Um, I don't understand where this number comes from. Do we have a play, do we have a source that can, that we can reference that says that the fire department spends this kind of money or that we spend this money, um, for the fire department to, to, uh, support ambulatory services? How much is a call? We don't know any of those things. In addition, and I'm just a layman in the medical world, I understand that McCabe only provides BLS, which is basic life support service. And the medical center, their ambulances have something called ALS, which is advanced life support. Uh, a, a better quality, you know, of medical things that we need, God forbid, if there's an emergency. And my understanding in reading the resolution, this keeps cutting out on me. Um, in reading the resolution, that it would be McCabe that would subcontract for the ALS, which would leave a very important part of the services that the public would receive, that decision not made by the council or the public, but by a third party. I don't think that's a good thing. I also agree very strongly with Mr. Sabowski that to have a review committee without a physician or an emergency worker on there is, is really not a good thing because we don't know the intricacies of what it means to be in an ambulance or to be standing at that door when an ambulance pulls in. So we need to have somebody on there. <clears throat> and on the last note, I just want to mention, uh, you know, something about what I saw on social media this weekend, and I have a grave concern about that. Yes, Mr. Uh, One minute. On social media, December 13th from the McCabe Facebook. The City of Jersey City has notified McCabe Ambulance that on January 1st, 2014, we will become the 911 EMS agency for the city. And I don't understand how that happens. Now, if this was done without your consent, which is not the first time this was done, in case you don't know that, when something was done and then you voted on it, what you need to do is censure the administration for having done that, because I know that if I were in your place, I wouldn't want somebody making those decisions for me. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Hi. I just Hi. wanted to say my name is Kathy Carnevale. I'm a lifelong resident of Jersey City who also sits as a volunteer on the Liberty Health Care Board. And I want to thank you for tabling this resolution today and take it for further consideration. Thank you. Omar Milan. Omar Milan. Joel Hsu. Felicia Palmer. Stuart Hochran, Joseph Fayot, Lorenzo Richardson, Karen Mondana, Monique Andrews. So, Monique. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Monique Andrews, lifelong resident of Jersey City, um, also a local uh, activist, community activist. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out about the ambulance service that everyone is speaking about tonight, uh, my mother is uh, um, 85 years old. She's been in Jersey City for 45 years. 
one of the courtesies besides putting stuff like this in the newspaper should have went to the residents, so the older residents, so they can know what's going on. My mother is not aware of this, and she needs medical attention, every, you know, almost every day. And I think that she was neglected, and for her to be a taxpayer for 45 years, y'all owe her that. And that's part of, you know, just basic respect, along with the other homeowners and people that have the medical attention. Jersey City Medical Center was around for a very long time, and sometimes when we ask for change, we better be careful of what we ask for, okay? Because a lot of changes have been going on in Jersey City, not necessarily because they needed it, it's because you guys wanted it, or the Board of Education wanted it, or someone of power wanted it. It wasn't what the residents wanted. And I'm starting to see a regular pattern of just, we are gonna do it our way, and y'all deal with it. But guess what? Election time comes back again. And we all gonna have to deal with that. And I hope y'all remember that. When y'all come to our houses and ask for our vote, remember that. Because now, no one wants to come to us and tell us what is going on. So, at this point, I hope y'all have a nice holiday. And I hope you respect the residents of Jersey City. And sometime again, change is not always good. Thank you. Thank you. If I could just speak, uh, Robert, uh, if I could just speak, uh, and I say this respectfully, Ms. Andrews, that uh, the changes that this administration and this council have implemented were exactly what was we promised on a campaign, literally going through. Now, that's not to say to speak with regard to this, this particular contract. But just speaking about some of the changes, including the off-duty officers uh, that was just passed tonight, um, the restructuring and consolida uh, consolidation, proposed consolidation of autonomous agencies, all of that is exactly the things that we promised. And yes, the changes have come quickly. And I give credit to our mayor, who is uh, working hard in his own administration to bring changes and fulfill on the promises that we made. Colleen Calero. Demetrius Terry. Amir Saeed. Can I take this place? He's not coming. No, no, empty. As you called me late in the afternoon, you're number 72, sharing the last name. Good try. Uh, Robert Luckritz. Hi, Robert. Wouldn't be fair to the other. Forty people. Yes, Robert, you're going to be brief, right? Yes, absolutely. Uh, good evening. My name is Rob Lukritz. I'm the director of EMS for the Jersey City Medical Center and also Jersey City resident. In the interest of time, I understand that you've tabled this agenda item, and I'm going to decline to speak. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bob Carrington. Boy, it must be Christmas. Tyrone Chess. Marlene Sandcamp. Ernesto Tolentino, Dr. Tolentino. Heather Oliver. John Lacey. Joseph Biggie. Brenda Hall. Matt McCullough. Mark Spector. Anthony Turner. Bruno Molino, Woody Francicone. Everyone turn the page to read three two Chanda. Chang Wang. Miguel Rivera. Bridget De Souza. Andy Ibanez. Ibanez. Council members, I'm an eight-year resident of Jersey City, and I'd like to thank you for tabling this matter and giving it further review. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mickey McCabe. Doriel Castellanos. Ted Parker. Kim Haas. Joseph Muniz, Jose Lopez, Mika Roberson, <laughs> Nick.
Nizer Kafai. Annie Kessler said she would not be here. Ralph Bravo. All right, Kabili. Uh, Kabili Tayyadi. Um, I'm very glad it was postponed also, but there are some things for the record that I would ask since it was printed and put to the public that um, McCabe Amelance provide documentation to the city council, to the administration. I quote in an ad from December the 16th, page 11 of the Jersey Journal. The medical center has used this 9-11 service to divert patients against their will, sending them only to the medical center. That needs to be documented. Because either it's true or it's false. And if it's true, there should be documentation. Number two, making matters worse, the medical center missed too many emergency calls. That needs to be documented. Either it's true or it's false. If it's true, it needs to be documented. Number two, it says after months of a study, a committee appointed by the mayor has recommended McCabe Amelance as the city's new emergency medical services provider. We need to see a copy of that study and what it was based upon. The other thing, number four, is that it goes on to say, let them know you are tired of paying for Jersey City Medical Center's expensive, unreliable, and self-serving 9-11 service. It needs to be documented what is expensive, and it needs to be documented what is unreliable, and it needs to be documented what is self-serving. It then goes on to say, let them know the EMS contract should not go to out-of-towners like Barnabas Health. Barnabas Health is not running the Jersey City Medical Center. We're in discussions about a possible, possible merger. It goes on to say, which now controls the medical center. Try to use its Goliath status to wrestle the contract. The firm that is lobbying for McCabe Amelance, and I don't know how they are affording such a firm, but Mr. Sean Jackson works for Robert Torricelli's lobbying firm. Now, they need to talk about Goliath and produce the finances they are paying for that. I am among the Board of Trustees, and I had a discussion. My mother passed at the Jersey City Medical Center when I was 26. I am now 63. That was when I was 26. Since Mr. Scott has been here, we need to look at the things that have occurred at the medical center. One in particular, Dr. Rashawn Williams left tonight, an African-American cardiologist. He worked with Mr. Luckowitz, who came up earlier, and they put together devices and our ambulances. They're very clearly, the moment they pick you up, the hospital and those ambulances electronically can begin to tell you everything that is wrong with you. I think it was CBS or NBC that did a special on that. I'm sure Mr. Scott can provide that. Mr. McKay told us Monday night that if this contract was approved tonight, I should say told you, well told us, because it was on television, that if this contract was approved tonight, he could order 15 ambulances tonight. That takes nine months. Next thing he told us, thank you, Mr. Byrne, he told us that if this contract was approved tonight, he will construct a hub to store those ambulances in Jersey City. There needs to be given a construction schedule. There needs to be a cost, because if I gave him 15 ambulances tonight, he would have no place to store them. I come here as a resident of this town since 1968, somebody who's fought hospital closings before the city council appointed me as a community representative to the board of trustees four years ago. And I come here as somebody who is still before this mic as deputy mayor 
and as a board of trustees member, and has denounced some of the policies and practices of the hospital board that I sit on. I'm going to close on this. We're getting ready to celebrate the birth of Christ. And there's a piece in Matthew 2nd chapter that talks about Jesus' father. It says, Joseph was a just man. Let us be just and let us not be financial mercenaries. God bless you and happy happy holiday. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Thank you, Council President and the City Council for having me. My name is Patricia Waiters. <clears throat> Strong activist and advocate, like the last speaker just said, I advocate for the whole Hudson County, but I stand here tonight a little disappointed. And I told you before, I'm a straight shooter. It bothers me to see his politics as usual. But let me tell our new elected officials some one-on-one. -on -one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Politics 101. Never forget the people that put you there. Constituency is always first. With that being said, I ran for public office six years as an independent in Hoboken, New Jersey. And you know why I stay independent? First of all, I don't have money to buy no backroom deals. Secondly, because I'm a people's person. And it bothers me because I traveled from Hoboken through the whole campaign and stood at this microphone and was a stern, stern supporter of Mr. Forbes as the councilman. What bothers me most is my family born and raised in Jersey City all their life. Miss Waterman from, Mungum, uh, from Marion Projects, we was neighbors, we was kids, we was from the olden days when it took a village to raise each other's kids. When your mother spanked us and told us to go in the house, we still respected her the next day. That's the type of issues I wanted to see when I seen your name on a ballot, because I said about time. And to see new faces in new places, this is what we were elected you guys for. Now, what bothers me tonight is an integrity issue that Mr. Fulop ran his campaign on, and I supported him 100%. Even a personal attack from Mrs. Raiden, everything, I will stand at this microphone and say to Steve, Steve, hang in there. I'm going to fight hard for you, and I called every family member from Marriott Projects to my high school in Snyder to my grammar school, and I said, let's support Steve Fool up and give him a chance. And I'm not here tonight to bash Steve and put him down, because I still have Steve's back, and I'm still begging my family members. It takes time. It takes time. The same thing I said with Obama when he got in office. Don't be quick to attack. Let's work together. I don't like the, what I've seen tonight that I witnessed too with the majority versus the minority. Council President, take a breather. Work with your opposing side. It is what it is. And a person like me that educated myself with real Hudson County politics, I could stand here and say I got 2,636 votes without a penny spent. And that gains integrity of the people. And I feel good because I can walk around with my head up high. I don't have to look in the reflection, Mr. Healy's old saying, in my shoes. I can look directly in your eye. Because I mean well, I hold integrity during campaign time and after. Now, I'm a little disappointed because I had an emergency. And I reached out to my elected leaders. Not as a reward. When I campaign with you and I endorse you, it's free from my heart. I don't expect a job. I don't expect a backroom deal. I expect respect and integrity. Never ignore Pat Waiters. If you can't help me, don't hurt me. But to call a phone that I know when I called back when you was running and you picked it up on the first ring, not only to hear to me I have to make an appointment, only to hear you not answer, only to hear I get an answering machine, that stripped me hard. It hurts me because it made me feel like the allegiance that you told me that you had is no longer there. You don't lose faith and allegiance when you win the spot. You raise your hand and go under oath and work for the constituents even harder. Okay? I'm a little disappointed because I had a serious situation with a family member, whether it was my immediate family member or anyone, and I still today even came in person, gave him the benefit of the doubt because of the water main break, and tried to get an appointment. I didn't want it today. If you tell me it's in 2016, I'll be satisfied because at least you told me and I wasn't ignored. I ask this council tonight, please, you won these seats, four years come real fast, do what you was elected to do. Please don't ignore the constituency. We need help. 
I need you to answer us. I don't need nobody taking a known disregard. I'm going to leave some of my cards tonight. I'm wrapping it up here because I got a stack of letters and I only been in the door for five minutes and I answer all of my constituents. A young man had the nerve to tell me, excuse me, my name is, I said, I don't need your name because when you call Pat Wade she answer. It shouldn't matter what your name is. I answer. And on the issue too, I received this tonight with the Grand View. Please look into this matter. This is an ongoing situation. When that dead body was in there, it got everybody's attention. Don't wait till another victim got to die to answer anybody's concerns. Please, I beg you. And with that being said, I will give you one of my cards tonight, and I'm still here for you to support you and support what's right for the people. Thank you, Mr. Burns. Have a wonderful night. Patricia. Yes. Give me afterwards. Thank you, ma'am. MTS Syed? Yes, sir. Mr. Council President, Council, Mr. Byrne, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Since uh, the EMS revolution has been omitted today, I have only two points to say, two things to say. One is I want to compliment the mayor for taking, for showing the courage to uh, withdraw this resolution and I think uh, he has earned some more respect by doing so this evening and I hope he will continue to be um, a strong mayor. The secondly, I'm surprised at the worthy and able council the entire council, how could you possibly ignore and not advise properly the mayor to take this step much earlier than tonight, that he has to do this at the last minute? This is embarrassing. This show reflects on all of you. Then why didn't you tell him so? There are a lot of repercussions. So I hope um, that you will think again and with your conscience and do something right for the city of Jersey City. Thank you. Happy Christmas. Jim Lesh. Just put an E at the end of your name. Okay, thank you. I was going to mention that. L-E-G-G-E. First of all, I'd like to commend you, ladies and gentlemen, for your patience and dedication. It's been a long evening. And uh, I have a couple of things to mention that you probably already thought about. First of all, uh, perhaps you'd like to develop a new procedure for decision making so you have more time from when you get the information to the Wednesday when you have to make a decision. And uh, secondly, I've been living in Jersey City for 17 years. I've lived in four of the six wards. Uh, I've lived five years in Ward E. Uh, I, I was one of the first tenants in the Park Foundry on uh, Jersey Avenue and 10th Street. I, sp I lived one year in Ward C um, on Jones Street in the General Square area. I lived uh, eight years in Ward F on Randolph Avenue and Storms, and the uh, last three years I've been in Ward B on uh, Broad Broadman Parkway uh, near High Snyder High School. And uh, I've been actively involved in the cultural community in Jersey City. I've curated numerous art exhibitions. I've produced nine shows at the Lowe's Jersey Theater, for example. A cappella voice, two spoken word events, one sh two short play events, flamenco guitar and dance, blues band, contemporary chamber music, new wave avant funk group, and um, without meaning to denigrate the West Side, the West Side is relatively speaking a cultural backwater, and uh, I understand that there is a movement towards creating a special improvement district there. And uh, I would like to give my strong encouragement and support to that and anything that you ladies and gentlemen can do to uh, get the West Side involved in more cultural events. For example, there are no venues. If you want to uh, have an art exhibition, you know, there's a bar or something like that, maybe a coffee shop. 
but uh, there really are no venues there. I understand there are some uh, abandoned buildings uh, on Mallory, for example, which is a fairly wide street, which the city owns because the property payers uh, defaulted on their taxes, and maybe some of those buildings could be used as a venue for cultural events. That's just a suggestion. Um, the Greenville Hospital is up on the hill, so it's the atmosphere is that it's not really in the west side because the west side is kind of like the downward slope and the low-lying area. But I guess that would be another possibility uh, if that building uh, isn't being used for anything. That would be a great space for cultural events. But you know, maybe it's too close to the Bethune Center, so um, you know. I'm just throwing some suggestions out. So that's all I have to say. I strongly encourage uh, the development of a special improvement district and uh, promotion of cultural events on the west side. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Roy Otley. Council, Council Jim. Mr. Leck. Jim, uh, I had a conversation with you regarding the um, special improvement district on west side. Just want to let you know I'm working hard, myself, Council President, and the mayor. Um, we're going to be putting out a press release on that. I'm looking forward to make that happen in, within the next uh, year because it's going to act, take about six months before you know we start to put stuff in place. And I would love to sit with you so we could um, you know discuss you know some of your ideas on Mallory Avenue as well. Great. Thank right. you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. And Roy Otley. Lisa Watson. Lisa? Lisa. That's yeah, fine. Thank you so much. An extra vowel. An extra vowel, yes. Uh, first of all, I just want to wish everyone a happy holidays and Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. And Thank you. And always, um, I have a concern about this project across the street at the Majestic. Um, this is a project that I, it escapes me how things have just changed over, over time. And I think it's great that you guys at least are adhering to the new uh, structure for abatements. That, that gives me faith and hope in the, in the new administration. But reading from an article, it says, the council introduced an ordinance at its November 26th meeting that would grant 272 Grove Street Urban Renewal approval to switch from first proposed condominium project to a market rate rental, increasing the number of units and reducing the number of parking spaces. So was that all involved in your decision making? Um, so I, I will, I'll, speak, I, I'll speak to this one, um, at least per my understanding, and if anybody in the admin can please correct me if, I, if I'm wrong here. Um, the amount, the number of units that they can build and the parking that they can have is part of, it's covered in, in the redevelopment plan. Right, so, okay, so that's so fine. So it's kind of regardless of, of the abatement. I understand that. So the redevelopment plan that I have states a different number of units, and it states a different number of parking, including a thousand, for every thousand square feet of commercial space, it should be one parking space. That disappeared. Somehow, these, this approval disappeared. And I have something from planning that says, um, and this is from planning, that says uh, no deviations from the redevelopment plan are being sought. And this was for the site plan approval hearing. So if there was no deviation sought, and in the actual approval, which was amended once, says that there's going to be 40, it was 0.4 percent parking space. So it wasn't real, it wasn't a, a fixed number. It was like if you're going to have 99 units, you get 0.4 percent parking, and it was one parking space per thousand square feet of commercial space. Where did the com parking go for commercial? Okay, this is really in, very relevant to this city because I know that you know the Silvermans would like to think that they you know that we don't need parking and the planning thinks that we don't need parking. But I have ample pictures to show that we have no parking in this particular neighborhood as it stands already currently. And here's the Silverman's parking lot filled with cars and now it's going to be a building. So where are the cars going to go? I, this is, I, I don't understand. But the parking is removed from, from, the, uh, from the plant and now they're given a limited number, 46 parking spaces. The Silverbins are quoted as saying in the newspaper that they're going to bring 50 to 100 
full-time employees to the area. Where are they going to park? 46 parking spaces for the building, no commercial parking space for 20,000 square feet, and they're going to bring 50 to 100 full-time employees and no parking for them either. You know where they're going to park? They're going to park on my street. You know where I park? I park in your parking lot illegally because I don't have a choice because I come home at night and I can't find parking. So parking is really, really, really important. And the fact that this has been whitewashed and just kind of give them what they want is a, I just, I don't understand how this works because I have been chasing this project from as soon as I got <laughs> wind of it. And the changes have just been radical and fast and, and just adhering to what these developers want. And I don't understand how to keep pace because I don't get paid to do this. But all I know is that you need to know we need parking here. We're desperate for parking here. They don't have six parking lots, as they like to be quoted in the paper, in Van Wars Park. They have one at the Majestic, and it's full all the time. They don't have parking. They don't have one-to-one -one parking. Also, I have a problem with turning this from rentals. Was redevelopment based on this being condos? Because homeowners bring value to our neighborhood. So a development with condos is relevant. Rental, renters, as it is known, don't bring as much value to the neighborhood. They don't invest in the neighborhood as much. They don't do social investment in the neighborhood. It's important, if this is tied to the redevelopment, that all things are considered. Yes, with the abatement, I understand. Great, you, you're adhering to the thing. But why are they getting an abatement if they're not really adding value to this community? Because they're only adding value to their pockets by shoving rentals down our throats and taking every bit of, you know, quality of life that we have left here in this neighborhood. And it's just really, I can't keep up with it. I hope you guys can. And I, these are real valid questions. Where did the parking go? I want to know. So, thank you. Um, can I yeah, I think Councilman Osborne wants to address. Yeah, I, I, well, I don't know that I can address. I, I, would, I would like somebody um, to from the administration to speak to this. It, it, does the redevelopment plan say? So there just are to two be questions clear, that I heard. The, the, with regard to the changes, that is, in effect, discussion about the site plan approval and what was initially proposed in the initial site plan versus what the final site plan was. But the redevelopment plan is a separate document that underlies what you can and cannot do on the site. But you still have to go and get site plan approval, which is where you break down into the details of a specific project. Um, Ma'am, ma'am, I'm sorry, so, so let's, maybe, maybe, if you, if you, we're, we're, okay, we're, we're yeah. almost done, if you want to talk afterwards, can sit. Ma'am, all right. Not from your seat, not from your seat. Ma'am, ma'am, please. Not from your seat. Not from your Proposing seat. that if you would like to discuss with Councilman Osborne, your wardy representative. Okay, I'm going to call the next speaker, Peter Kelly. I was speaking, Robert. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the council. It's been a, a long evening, and I'll try not to make it any longer. Um, prior to the uh, meeting taking place, City Council had approached me and requested that since the agenda item in terms of the McCabe uh, 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 Liberty Health Ambulance contract discussion was going to be uh, put off and there was going to be vote, no vote tonight, he had requested that uh, neither I nor any of the supporters that we brought to speak on behalf of uh, the McCabe proposal, and there are many in the room as you can see, speak and, and since it was going to be put off we'd have a chance to speak later. And I. Uh, absolutely understood that, and I intend to honor that. Uh, I was, however, uh, stunned. I was dismayed uh, that my colleague from uh, the medical center uh, chose to not honor that request, which was made of him also. Um, and I just want to say to you, ladies and gentlemen, that I intend to honor it. Uh, we will speak when the council meets next. Thank you, and good evening. Thank you, Dr. Caprio. No, Dr. Caprio. Greg Sorokin. Rumrop Sakamon. 
Aaron Morrow. How many more do we have? Uh, two more. Mr. Burke would be our keynote speaker tonight. Good evening. My name is Aaron Morrow. Um, Mr. President, Council Members, I'll try and make it really short. Um, I am, I'm here tonight to talk about the really exciting issue of insurance um, because there are some resolutions tonight concerning uh, the uh, procurement of insurance, the hiring of an uh, insurance broker. Um, I wanted to hand up to you, if that's okay, uh, for each council member a uh, packet of information which will make great bedtime reading at some point for you. Um, can I hand this to you? Now, in this packet, um, which most of which was prepared by the Citizens Campaign, and let me just state, I'm here on behalf of Civic JC. Um, I'm the president. We're a good government group, local group. Maybe some of you have heard of us. Um, in that packet, you'll see um, a couple of uh, pretty interesting things. Um, I, I should start by saying that we need to change the way we procure insurance uh, in Jersey City. I've already presented this to the business administrator, um, and uh, I wanted to get you folks on board um, and sort of bring you up to speed. Um, some of you may be aware of this. Uh, what we are proposing is something called best price insurance, uh, uh, and that means that instead of hiring brokers who will be paid by the insurance company a percentage of the uh, total uh, insurance policy, they would be paid a fixed uh, amount. Um, and they would be working for the city. Um, their interest would be aligned with the city's. Currently, the interest of insurance brokers is aligned with the size of the insurance policy. That makes no sense. I am not an expert in insurance. Um, but I'm smart enough to know that there's a conflict there and we need to change this. Now, I understand that um, the resolutions before you tonight are really covering, you know, three weeks from now. So I, you know, I can, cannot blame the city for uh, entering into contracts uh, for January 1. This needs to be done. But we wanted to start the conversation with you guys um, now. Um, and put this information before you so that you uh, perhaps can think about it uh, in the coming year and we can change the way uh, Jersey City procures insur insurance. And just um, to give you an example, and then I'll, I'll, then I'll end my uh, little uh, talk, um, several cities in Jersey, in New Jersey, have, uh, have adopted on um, the uh, ordinance, the sample ordinance that I have uh, handed up to you, and the savings are pretty staggering in terms of what they've saved. So Cherry Hill um, is projecting a six million dollar savings. Tom's River, a million. Morristown, a hundred thousand dollars. Perth Amboy, three million. Perth Amboy, uh, and that was the um, that was their school board. Two million saved uh, by Perth Amboy for the city. Um, you know, Hoboken next door has adopted this, uh, this ordinance, um, and I could go on and on. It's in the packet. I don't need to uh, take your time any further, but there's huge savings. The budget um, problems in Jersey City are well known. Um, we need to uh, save money wherever we can. Getting insurance brokers aligned with our interests in saving money is something everybody should be in favor of. Um, so thank you for uh, taking a look at this, and uh, I look forward to speaking to you in the coming year. Hey. You know, if possible, you know, I have a lot of questions about uh, insurance policy tonight. So people, you know, don't leave, you know, stay with us. You okay. know, maybe you can answer my question also. Okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Mr. Morrow. Mary Mills. Mary Mills. Mary Mills. And Jason Berg. Hello. I'm glad you postponed the discussion of the ambulance uh, service. I was very surprised because I've been out of town for a month to come back and hear about the RFP and the decision to uh, go with uh, McKay because I have a healthcare administration background, going starting in healthcare in New York City in '77. 
I worked for uh, Lutheran Medical Center where we had, and I was involved in management of emergency room at AOD that's covering at night, administrative on duty, and day a manager over uh, several functions, which also included the ambulance people. And we had, uh, I learned an awful lot at that time. And I can tell you that with 14 ambulances, we were barely able to cover South Brooklyn with the help of New York City, Bravo, and Maimonides. And it is extremely expensive. It, there's a, a common misconception among non-medical people that there's a gold mine in emergency rooms. This is not the case at all. They are like a running sore on your balance sheet because as an acute care facility, you must accept anyone who walks in. And no one runs a business that way. I mean, they don't. In addition to that, no one gives you a budget if you're an administrator that you can work in because you don't know what Medicaid's going to pay you next year, what Medicare is going to pay you, and even if Medicaid will pay you. So the fact that we have a solvent medical center here after years of, uh, of, of terrible stress and that there has been a turnaround there that provides uh, academic-based emergency medicine is, is astonishing. I, I'm so proud of it for having done that. Uh, even though uh, there's another misunderstanding among general people, and that is, uh, see, to give you some background, emergency medicine developed with the Vietnam War and the troubles in Ireland, where it became clear that you had to do medicine on the site. And because you were able to extract people, put them in bags, use different kinds of technology, you saved more people than in any war and in the troubles also. Now, that's been elaborated academically and put in place in hospitals. So we have triple, doubled, at least doubled the saves we get in emergency rooms. It's real medicine because you do the save on the street by stabilizing somebody and then transporting them and do surgery on that bus, uh, do all kinds of drug administration, and this is serious medicine and it is expensive and people have to pay for it. There's no cheap uh, ambulance rides because it's not transportation anymore. That's why it is a military type of, of operation. You have you have uh, protocols that change constantly that challenge the average doctor, let me tell you, the, the average doctor. So talking about a, an emergency medicine program going, spreading out from an emergency medicine department run by uh, a, a board certified emergency medicine specialist in a, a, a strong teaching hospital with strong medical leadership going out to the street is a whole different animal, which I understand they have 40 buses, for heaven's sakes. That is a whole different animal from a transport company with, with ACLS and with, run by paramedics, but not now providing that, either for the county or for the city. It's a whole different animal. Uh, I have bought ambulances. Now, Mercedes-Benz makes every ambulance in the U.S. And you can't get one for less than several hundred thousand dollars equipped with everything you need for ACLS. They, don't, they, they are very expensive and you can't negotiate. So it, is, it, 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 it makes me question the credibility of several statements here and of the sense of criticizing the medical center's lack of response to 100, 126 calls or whatever, eight minutes late or something like that, when you have Sandy in a year, uh, where <laughs> everyone's calling 911, uh, I don't think that statistically uh, holds. You know, these criticisms to me seem rash, they seem unprofessional even, they seem specious. It's getting uh, nasty. It's not it, in the interest of the community because it's about blood and breathing. It's not parks, garbage, etc. So you ha we need more time on it. Thank you. Thank you. Jason Byrd.
Jason Berg, thank you very much for letting me speak. I do apologize for my outburst, but I do take uh, very close attention to my Bill of Rights, my right to speak and then to address. As an oath taker and a Vietnam vet with no distinction, I, didn't, I resigned my commission because I refused to ser serve a country that did not, did not put Richard Nixon in jail because he was a uh, domestic, uh, uh, domestic, a domestic enemy. He did a lot of bad things, and the country needed uh, victory. I would have become a Republican at that time in 1974. I am also, I have many hats. You can see how bold I am. And with that, I am the chair of Hudson County National Liberty Alliance and the state organizer for the New Jersey. And we will take back our republic, not through the arms, but through the pens. This government has gone crazy. It once was called a republic, but they called a country. We are in a demise. We have our rights violated daily. The 14th Amendment, which granted Afro-Americans the right to right to be citizens and right to of solely to vote, it was never even signed as a bill of rights as a bill by the two-thirds vote. It was passed illegally. That also made each one of us here businesses, which allows them to tax us and put us under their codes. The United. Um, codes that we are abide by, but we don't have to be abide by. The only thing that gives you guys, state government, county government, and the feds is our mere consent. When you go into a courtroom, you are under, when you say you understand, you are saying that you are under their jurisdiction. Well, folks, you're not. And if you want to check out more on that, go to National Liberty Alliance. Now, where do I speak? I've been speaking here since 2005, trying to have things change. I'm very delighted to see the children getting into sustainability. It's very good. It's very practical. And since 2005, I've been trying to say that. It took me five years to get the Environmental Commission reactivated. And tonight they're having the meeting, or they had the meeting. With that... I would like to see more people coming out here, but if you bust in, that doesn't, doesn't show much. It doesn't show you want to be here, it's just that you're on one movement. It's necessary that we have people to come out and show their support for our great city of Jersey City, a great republic. We are here by the grace of God. I am a cancer survivor. I've also I've been almost killed many times through whatever accidents. And whatever God has given me, I've been very blessed. I am very pleased that I'm still here. And I'm very adamant what I do for others. This woman who came up, Miss Douglas, this MUA is a dog. They went and destroyed my sewer line and they said, oh, it, you can't prove it. I only found three pieces of my sewer line. A sewer line is an inch thick. And the only way you can break a sewer line is by hoeing it out. With that, by the way, I sent in a request for the 24-7 ordinance. It is now uh, four days over that, over that request. It's now, the city is now in contempt. I like, I did send everyone out for the uh, 81 Garfield Avenue. I'd like to see that uh, become a park again. And with that, now again I say, our government is given its authority by the people when we, ele when we elect you. We are the people. You gentlemen up front and you guys on the side are our servants, not our slaves. We want you to do your best for us and remind, and we remind you that you're only there by our consent. Thank you very much and God bless and happy holidays.
Okay, council members, that exhausts the speaker's list. I'm sorry, Robert, uh, Councilman Rivera would like to say, speak. So, Robert, I just want to share a couple of things. Uh, I wasn't going to say much today, but I just want to share on both of the uh, entities that are here in reference to the contract. Personally, uh, it's a coincidence that we have Jersey City Medical Center and we have CarePoint, previously Christ Hospital. Uh, I have been, my family personally, and I want you to understand that we haven't, I personally haven't made a decision on which way to go here. But my family suffered two times with both entities. My wife lost her father waiting for the EMS for medical center. And I lost a family member with McCabe en route to Bayonne. So it's really troubling to me to hear that a lot of concerns are what if we lose life because of a decision that we make because of an entity. The fact is that we've already lost life. So when I made that comment, a person told me, well, it, we're talking about now. So in other words, both my family members are out the door. But that's not what we're here for. And. Uh, I really, really want to stress that being that we tabled or withdrew this contract, I want to make sure that several things come on this contract edited. I want to make sure that each contract, before we see it again, make sure that the Jersey City Fire Department remains as the first responder, 100 percent. Number two, I want, we, we've, we all, we've already, obviously, both entities make money, make no mistake about that. I think the city, moving forward, I think the city should look at how would it be if the fire department, which are already strategically placed throughout the city to make a difference in our fires, maybe we should entertain squads or ambulances in our fire department. I'm pretty sure that our response time will be 100% better because they will be placed throughout the city. Again, this is my thought, and this is me talking, not the rest of the council, but I had to like blow up, if you will, because I, 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 I've had 336 emails, 207, no, scratch that, 436 emails, 237 phone calls, and no disrespect to each entity that's here, but it seemed like on Wednesday, one entity lined up 500 people to one phone and said the same thing. And today, the other entity lined up another 500 people to one phone and said the same thing. Listen, the council people here, we get it. It is not easy to vote on a contract that has history. But we need to make sure that in doing that, we, we make sure that the constituents of the city are safe and that we get you out the best team possible to make sure that our city moves forward safe in a positive way. Another thing I would like counsel to do is, I'm not a big fan, again, I didn't talk this with the city council, Daniel Rivera, 
is not a big fan of five-year contracts. So if we could put a three-year contract, that I would entertain, personally, and that we could make sure that, listen, we have other options in three years and not in five years. That's all I have to say to you all. Take care. Good job. Got the balance of business to take care of. Let's allude to petitions and communications, 6A through Y, no officers' communications. We have reports of directors, 8A through K. We're to the claims, the Medicare claims, and addendum number one, Councilperson Kajewski. Aye. Ram Cha. Aye. Bajano. Gun. Aye. Osborne. Aye. Coleman. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Waterman. Aye. Lavara. Aye. We've approved the, all of the claims, the Medicare claims in addendum number one. Council members, 10A through M, note that we did D and E earlier. So it's 10A through M. Council person. 10H withdrawn. Excuse me? With 10H, 10H withdrawn. withdrawn. 10A. H. 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 It's being withdrawn. Okay, that's right. Excuse me. Yeah. 10H is withdrawn. So it's 10A through M. D and E approved earlier. H withdrawn. Councilperson Gajewski. Aye. Bob Chow. Aye. Bajano. Aye. Yun. Aye. Osborne. Aye. Coleman. Aye. Rivera. Aye. Waterman. Aye. Lavara. Just a happy 100th birthday to <laughs> former Deputy Mayor Jerome Lazarus. Aye. Thank you. And I was there for his 100th. He enjoyed it. 10N through W, Councilperson Gajewski. Aye. Ram Chow. Aye. Bojano. Yun. Uh, I, I'm going to mention to, uh, 10R, 10R day, uh, 47 day, Abraham Avenue property owner. Actually, past administration, they didn't collect the uh, underpayment of an annual service charge almost uh, six, I mean, eight years. And the S, they didn't collect uh, uh, undercharge, I mean, that, that annual charge is six years. But thank God, uh, Corporation Council, Jeremy, and uh, 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 their team actually able to collect uh, whatever they underpay. They did a great job. I am really appreciate it. Continue to keep the good work. Thank you. Thank you. And I say aye. Council Person Osborne? Aye. Coleman? Aye. Rivera? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Lavara? Aye. And N through W90. No. X through Z6. No. Council Person Kajewski? Aye. Ram Chow? Aye. Bojano? Aye. Yun? Uh, 10Z2. 10Z2. We're going to spend, uh, I think, uh, $60,000 for marine oil. Yes, on company and the gasoline, the $60,000. Can't you give us uh, approximate gallons, how many gallons we purchase marine diesel and uh, gasoline? Instead of just uh, $60,000, you know, we should have some approximately how many gallons is there? Probably about 15,000 gallons. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how many it is, but I do know that we did discuss that at, uh, at uh, caucus, and it should be in the documents. So, no, we talk about the company itself, about how many gallons approximately, you know, we're using. And also, when you spend the $60,000, I like to know how many vessel and how many cars you use those things, you know. Yeah, the, the, if you could provide... Can you provide, provide Councilman Yun with the bid specs that um, yes, what please. the bid proposal was? I believe it has the weight that they proposed, correct? And 10Z5, DPW is going to purchase a two-fold SUV. One of the item, 10Z5, you know, oh, God. 
the snow plow. When I see the snow plow, the options they pay for the two snow plow, 16,936. When I look at the, the best snow plow put in the SUV, actually market price around uh, uh, 5,200. So when I look at it, we pay almost 6,500 overpay than what's supposed to pay. So I like the Corporation Council and the uh, uh, Persons Department to look into that issue too. Uh, we can certainly look into that, but these uh, items purchased off the state contract, they're done to a specific type of spec. And also, just to, to be clear, uh, the price of the 16000 is for two plows and the rigging of them. So really, it's roughly 7000 something or 8000 per plow. No, that's right? what I'm saying. When I look at the, uh, the uh, price, around the 5200 each is no plow. So what I'm saying is that we almost pay 6500 overpay than what's supposed to be. And actually, I think I council mentioned to a couple of times about it. We always say state to contract, state to contract. I think before we get into state to contract, hire the state contract vendors, I think we should get some quotation from local vendors. You know, I think that's the way we can save some taxpayers dollars. Your vote, Councilman, on 10X? Yes. Aye. Council Person Osborne? Aye. Holman? Aye. Rivera? Aye. Waterman? Aye. Bavaro? Aye. 10X through Z690. Z7 through Z15. Council Person Gajewski? Aye. Ram Chaw? Aye. Bajano? Aye. Gun? G14. We talk about the uh, uh, hired uh, uh, certified public account to auditing uh, a pilot program, Z14. That's correct. Yes. Now, we're going to pay $38,000. $38,000. This will be reimbursed by that uh, developer, I guess, right? Uh, this is a situation we discussed at caucus, if you remember correctly, Councilman. And what we explained at caucus is that this is a pilot where we anticipate the recovery from the audit will be dramatically more than the $38,000 we're expanding to perform the audit. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we decided it was prudent to go forth and, if, and, and do the audit so that we can enforce the contracts that were signed back then and collect as much revenue for the city as possible. And it was requested by the tax collector, correct? Oh, it was collected, correct, okay. requested by the tax collector, yes. Okay. Councilman Yun? Aye. 10Z7 through 15? Aye. Yep. Councilperson Osborne? Aye. Council oh, person I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. G15. 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 We hired the, the consulting company for the uh, dental program, provide dental insurance. Now, my concern is that, as I always say, we not pay for that, right? Correct? The consulting. Yeah, this is what Mr. Morell was just bringing up. Yes. The idea that he, so he's not, not getting paid, so his interest is getting but that commission from. They get commission from the insurance company. They pay directly from the, the insurance company, yes. So I think we got to look into the other gentleman, the one of the idea, because as a broker, he's a, the most interest is how much he's going to make on himself. So he willing to go. Yeah, go ahead. What happens is the, the broker does an RFP and solicits bids from the various you know, insurance companies, and they present those to us. The city reviews them to make sure that we're getting the best price. So. We get to see all the documentation, the quotes, before a decision's made. I see. So oh, they, they don't just pick a vendor and say, oh, this is what you should go with. Mm -hmm. They show, they do all the research, they give us a report on why, you know, who they recommend and why they recommend them. And then the city then makes the recommendations to the council. Okay. All right. Okay, still here, but a little bit later. Okay, thank you. All right. Councilperson Osborne voted. Councilperson Coleman? Aye. Rivera? Waterman? Aye. Council President. Aye. Z7 through Z15, 9-0.
I'm sorry? G16? G16. Z16 through 27. Councilperson Kajewski. Aye. Ram Chow. Aye. Bojano. Uh, Bob. Uh, 20. Uh, at the caucus meeting, I brought up the issue of on the resume. Bob. I believe that's an office. Uh, the address is an office. I'd like to know what his address is if he lives in the city. Check, check. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I, as I said, that this is the resume that they submitted, and we worked out this resume. I will uh, definitely reach out to Mr. Labib if you would like and ask him that question. If he doesn't live there, uh, I, as I said, I don't know for sure, but if he doesn't live in the city and he's using his law office address, I don't think he's Okay, your vote on Z16 through 27, Councilman Bajano? No, no on 20, and I think it should be uh, looked into. Councilman Yun? There is a problem, is it G16? G16, we're going to hire the, on the Horizon Healthcare Service. If you look at the quotation, compare with the three different companies based on their recommendation, Horizon is a $67.09 for the premium, but Athena is a $59.50, so Athena is a, I mean, the Signa is a $53.71. So Signa is a 23% cheaper than cheaper than uh, Blue Cruz. So the total is almost $146,000 we can save if we go Sigma. Any reason we have to go highest premium insurance company for the dental plan? I do have a report on that, and I will share that with the council. There's, a, there's actually a logical reason. Um, you know, and, uh, you know, first of all, we're getting an additional discount because we have, we're recommending Horizon Dental in addition to the Horizon Medical, so we're getting additional discounts on both sides. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a, another reason, and I wish I had the report in front of me, and I will definitely forward it to the council tomorrow. Mm -hmm. you can explain, I can explain the rationale. I can see how it looks a little odd, but there is a logical reason. Uh, I believe it has something to do with, you know, if we go to the uh, the lower plan, there's a less of a network, and it would it would incorporate more people going there, and because of that, it would probably raise our costs. But let me get the report for you and share that with you tomorrow morning. Yes, please. Okay. And uh, another one, they attached it the uh, evaluator actually recommendation form in the back. Is so. Uh, different than what I got, actually. First one, 10 Z16, they talk about closed dental plan. And the 10 Z17, they open dental program plan, but what they do that, 10 Z17, they print the evaluation report, not open dental plan, they printed the closed dental plan. So we didn't have open dental plan evaluated and recommendation. I'll get you the correct documents in the morning. I'll scan them and all email them to every council member in the morning. Mm. I couldn't hear you, Robert. I said I, I will scan the correct document. I don't, I'm sorry that you got the attachment is incorrect. But we'll, I will forward it to everyone first thing in the morning. Okay. So you're going to provide the documentation, right? Yeah. Correct. Okay, thank you. Because we got to study as of January 1st this program plan. Yes. So we, yeah, we got it's no a choice. It's continuation of our existing program. Okay, all right. Your vote, Council Person yes. Yoon? Yes, aye. Council Person Osborne? Um, <clears throat> just before I vote, I, I kind of want to uh, echo some of the points I think that Michael was getting at, um, which is that if this is you know, this is the last meeting in December, yes. right? And yes. it's important because the renewal starts January 1. And so this doesn't really, you know, when questions come up or if, if you know, we can't table this, right? Like we can't table this, all of a sudden we're not going to have insurance, right? So that's, um, it's kind of not a fair position to put us in. Yes. And, and I would just really ask that next year, get it to us one time before. Right, get, get it to us at least one meeting before, so we have right, at least thank a, you. just a little bit more time. Because if we tabled this, like people wouldn't have insurance. That's that's not fair. So uh, I, but please, please, please change this for next year. You know what? I, if we add it to her, Councilman Yun, if I can just interrupt. Yeah. So you're absolutely right. I agree 100 percent. But I will say only because I went through this last year mm -hmm. with the old council, um, the previous council, 
that we in fact did table it and went month to month and it was really uh, a fiasco <laughs> as a result. But um, Right. So we so, yeah. we, wanted, if we, had we don't time, want to have a we fiasco. Won't get in that situation. So you know what that means actually? If we see the 10Z19, we're going to have a stop get insurance cost of premium $2.3 million. And uh, we have to, minutes, last minute, we have to decide for yes or no. It's not fair to us, council, but also the city of Georgia City and the people, you know, as taxpayer. So we wish to have next time, at least months before, you know what I'm saying, get the full documentation for health insurance plan. Okay. Council Person Osborne, did you cast your vote? I said aye. You did. Council Person Coleman? Aye. Councilperson Rivera? Aye. Councilperson Waterman? Aye. Council President? Aye. All right, Z16 through 27 unanimously, except 10Z20 is 801. Councilman Baggiano voting, excuse me, 8. Oh, I'm sorry, no, what is Councilman it? Councilman Baggiano voting no. It's 81, not 801. 81 oh. on 10Z20. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All right, Z28 through the balance of business, Z41, which is not on the printed agenda, but I'll read its title again into the record. The resolution authorizing the extension of a contract with the Jersey City Medical Center to provide basic life support ambulance services in the city of Jersey City. So it's 10... D28, um, through 10Z41. We, don't we need to remove Z35? D35 is withdrawn. Okay. D35 is withdrawn. And we already That's voted withdrawn. on Z35. And we approved okay. Z30 earlier. Okay. Z30 for human trafficking. So it's... Z41, from Z28 to Z41, 30 approved earlier, Z35 was withdrawn. And the G32, can I speak with the G32? Present. Everything. Yeah, G32, uh, uh, first is a G28, 29, good, good job. I give to uh, the Jeremy and the, the youth great job. And G32, it's a bike line contract. As I understand, as I understand, Hudson County Planning Board hired one of the top, uh, actually consulting company, try to comprehensive bike line system in Hudson County, in a conjunction with all the 12 municipal city. So this time, we should be getting to contract just ourselves and the uh, Hoboken and we Hoboken. Is not fair to you know to the in the rest of the town. Not only that, we should be rushed to to paint street twice. So my recommendation, I like the G32 uh, withdrawal and uh, 28 to 38. You say? Yeah, I ask that the uh, is the G32 as a uh, table it. You're, re and you're requesting it can't be tabled, correct? Yeah, I ask it to G32 uh, uh, as a table. The resolutions can't be tabled, correct? No, then we have to be defeated or withdrawn. Yeah, defeated or withdrawn. The administration is not going to withdraw it. You need, you need to make a motion to delete it. You'd have to get a second. The council would have to vote. A motion to what? Delete. Delete. You to make a motion to delete the resolution. 32, right? C32? So just it to be... A, it has as a so you, you two gentlemen, resolution uh, to my colleagues, I, I, doesn't Z32 and Z38 go hand in hand? To delete 10Z32. We have a motion by Councilman Yeah, 32, 38, right. Seconded by Councilman Baggiano to delete Council Person Gattuso. I'm sorry, Robert. Uh, did, you, did you include Z32 and Z38? No, just Z32. Okay. But he uh, just said Just to delete C32, Councilman? Uh, no. no. Councilman Gajewski, Councilperson Gajewski votes no. Ramchal? No. Bajiano? On your motion, sir? 
Councilman Yun? Aye. Councilperson Osborne? Um, just a quick, quick question to the administration. What would be the impact of tabling this or voting, deleting it, whatever we're, the correct term we're using? We have uh, worked on an arrangement with the two other cities, all of whom are in Hudson County, and it would basically defeat the entire structure of that deal with those other two counties. I would start with those other two cities, and it would, it would stop the bike share program from going forward. We're not aware of a Hudson County program, but certainly a Hudson County program would not be in any way preclusive of us having our own program. Us having our own program will allow us to designate how the program operates, where the bikes go, and specifically the integration that we want with these two other cities. And, of course, we get the revenue. No. Just, you know, actually. Wait, wait, wait. Council? Yeah, person? okay. Wait, we're voting. at Councilperson. You voted, Councilman. Yeah. Councilperson Osborne on the motion to delete. Uh, no. Councilperson Coleman? No. Councilperson Rivera? Councilperson Waterman? No. Council President? No. The motion is defeated. Z28 through Z41, the balance of business, Z approved. Z30 approved earlier. Z35 withdrawn. Councilperson Gajewski? Aye. Councilperson Ramchal? Great job, Dominic. Aye. Councilperson Bajano? Aye. Councilperson Yun? Aye. Councilperson Osborne? Um, I just want to make a couple of comments. Um, one, um, thank you, Dominic, for uh, making sure to add the kind of open data, open API requirement to the RFP for the bike share. It's a, a, important to me, and I know it's important to open JC. Um, and then secondly, just for the folks who are left in the audience, um, would like to say that we, we are putting a resolution here um, that urges the United States Congress to act to ensure that um, mass transit benefits remain intact. So some of you um, may get benefits through your employer today where you can deduct uh, your, your public transportation. And I think the deduction is of $245 a month that you get tax-free. That's being decreased in 2014 to $130 a month while parking goes up to $250 a month. And, and we don't really think that that's the right policy in place for Jersey City residents because more residents here take public transportation than drive, number one. And number two, it encourages 31, people yeah. um, who work in Jersey City to drive here instead of to take public transportation here. So we're, we're sending a letter to um, U.S. Congress asking them to uh, please give equitable uh, reimbursement to people who take public transportation. And I vote aye. Councilperson Coleman. Aye. Councilperson Rivera? Councilperson Waterman? Aye. Council President? Hey, just a couple of things. Um, so just to backtrack on one resolution, I just wanted to say uh, best, best of luck to Father Felix on Z21. Um, with regard to uh, let's see, Z, boy, uh, Z37. Uh, a resolution urging the United States Department of Homeland Security to designate the Philippines for temporary protected status um, of the Immigration and Nationality Act in the wake of the widespread destruction caused by Typhoon Haiyan Yolanda. So urging our Department of Homeland Security um, and obviously the, the President to uh, grant the Philippines, Philippine nationals here in the United States uh, temporary protected status um, so that uh, they, they, they can remain here and um, without um, ha having the, the challenge of trying to make their way back home to a homeland at this point. And it's a temporary situation, um, but not to have to go back to their homeland um, in complete disarray. So uh, this has been done with uh, Haiti and other natural disasters throughout the world, um, urging them to do the same here. Um, with regard to the Z40, uh, I just want to say to uh, Jersey City Medical Center and McCabe, um, I think everyone in the council um, is looking at this very closely and looking to make a fair decision on this. I want you to know that uh, um, if I can, if, you, if you'd like to meet and still talk and discuss the issues, I'm happy to, to do that as well. Um, and my, my, my door is wide open. And actually, I'll be reaching out to, to both parties. Um, around this. Um, lastly, 
Um, is that Z40 or Z41? Z41. I'm oh, sorry, Z41. Yeah. And I vote aye and all. Okay. Council Motion. Members, uh, Z28 to Z41 have been approved unanimously, 9-0. <laughs> I'm showing a time of 10.17. We have a motion to adjourn. We have a motion. Motion Second. by Councilman Rivera. Seconded by whom? Councilman Me. Councilwoman Osborne. Councilwoman Osborne. Okay. Let's all say good night. We are adjourned at 10.17. Good night. Merry Christmas. Happy, Happy New Year. Happy birthday, Candace. Happy New Year.